Welcome to this uh, joint meeting of FAO and four Italian research institutions, uh, um, CNR, CREA, NAA, and the ISPRA. And as you all are aware, this uh, particular technical meeting is part of the MOU between FAO and all the four Italian research institutions that was renewed in 2021. And now this is currently ongoing. The second phase of the MOU is ongoing. And we had uh, several uh, meetings, uh, bilateral meetings together with our technical divisions with all of you to stock take what has been done in the past and what is going on now. And also we identified the priorities for this ongoing memorandum of understanding. In that uh, context of a joint uh, MOU between FAO and the Italian research institutions, this is your first physical meeting, physical technical meeting, focusing on specific topic in which our colleagues in land and water division are taking the lead role and they have a concrete joint activities with all of you. And the purpose of this particular joint meeting, the technical meeting on innovation uh, for drought and agriculture is to share experiences and also uh, what is going on to stock take about the technical activities going on between uh, our institutions jointly and also as part of our own mandate, our own individual organizational mandates, what is going on with respect to this part, uh, particular topic, and what are the future priorities that we can enhance our collaboration, making sure that uh, this is useful, and also uh, contribute to the broader objective of addressing food insecurity issues, especially in the developing world, and also for the achievement of the SDG goals. I know that there are a lot of activities that are ongoing on this uh, uh, topic between our institutions. With this brief introduction, let us uh, move ahead with the uh, uh, opening session of this uh, particular meeting. And in this meeting, we have an uh, opening session. Uh, that is uh, between 9.30 and 10.10 10 for about 40 minutes, and then followed by technical presentations by all the five institutions involved in this MOU. And then we will have a question and answer session for about 15 minutes for further clarification on the specific points. And then there will be a closing at uh, 12 noon focusing on the recommendations for our joint work in the future. So this is the, uh, the agenda and format of this meeting today. So with this uh, brief uh, introduction, I request uh, Mr. Vincent Martin, Director, Office of Innovation, to give opening remarks uh, for this meeting. Over to you, Vincent. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Selva Raju. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this, uh, to this meeting. Um, I'm uh, pretty new in this position. I just had come back to FAO three months ago. So, um, so it, but it's great to be, to be here with you and to understand the partnerships we are having with uh, Italian institutions, research institutions. I think being based here in, uh, in Italy, it's extremely important that we strengthen these links and we use the full potential of uh, this um, expertise and the science we have here, uh, we have here in, uh, in Italy. Uh, to be totally honest, I was not even sure I was going to give some remarks this morning. So, <laughs> so there would be a certain degree of uh, improvisation. But, um, but nevertheless, being at the, uh, the head of the uh, Office of Innovation, uh, I think this discussion is really timely and is really, uh, really important. I'm glad to welcome you as uh, institutions, uh, Italian research institutions to see how we can do better in uh, our collaboration. I'm very glad to welcome also our colleagues, I guess in the, in the back of the room or from the technical divisions, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. And, uh, and to see also um, how together with the different technical division, the Office of Innovation can really streamline innovation within your, your programs. I think that's really, uh, that's also a great opportunity for me as a newcomer 
uh, in this position to uh, uh, make this offer to uh, to the colleagues here, to the uh, institutions uh, in Italy, but also the colleagues uh, within FAO, and to think how can we work better together to make sure that innovation is at the heart of uh, our work. Um, it's something that is very important also for the for our director general, as you as you know, he has put innovation at the uh, center of his mandate. Thanks to him, we now have uh, an office uh, uh, of the chief scientist. And we have this office of innovation that was uh, created uh, three years ago, approximately. Um, and also, uh, thanks to uh, his leadership and the leadership of our chief scientists, we now have a science and innovation strategy, the first ever science and innovation strategy of FAO that was launched in uh, 2021. So that's really uh, that's really an innovation per se to have such an innovation, uh, such a, such a strategy. And uh, why do we have it? We have it also uh, to echo what the Secretary General of the United Nations uh, has said during the last years, the uptake of science and technology uh, in our member countries is still extremely low. And at the same time, this is uh, where we will find the salvation. This is, we need science and innovation to uh, try to bring back the SDGs on track. Uh, and we had this report uh, in 2019, specifically on science and innovation, for the SDGs, which was called The Future is Now. And this report is uh, quite alarming, but also gives us some direction on how can we better leverage science and innovation to uh, achieve uh, uh, our goals. So everything put together shows that uh, FAO is very, very um, uh, engaged now in this, uh, in this uh, domain. And, uh, and through this uh, science and innovation strategy, we are trying to identify what are the best solutions, practices, uh, newest technologies that we can leverage to uh, address this issue. So today we are here to talk about the uh, uh, issue of, uh, of drought. Um, needless to say that the situation is, uh, is deteriorating uh, in many parts of the world. Uh, it's uh, multifactorial by essence. It's a combination of uh, uh, extreme climate event of uh, socio-political crisis, of socio-economic crisis, of conflicts, and uh, when you put all these together, it uh, uh, it brings more people suffering from hunger, from food insecurity, and malnutrition. If I'm correct, uh, I think during the last years, uh, these events have pushed uh, 23 million people uh, in poverty and in uh, in. Uh, greater level of uh, food insecurity which is uh, uh which is daunting and uh, and we know also that the, the the agricultural sector is the one which is the most affected by this uh, extreme weather weather event so the um i guess we all have a sense of urgency urgency to uh to find this solution to uh, to respond to what we are seeing these days and we need to mobilize all the science and, and research we have these days to, uh, uh, to resolve or try to resolve this problem. So maybe two things I would like to say here before closing. The first thing is uh, um, I, I very much look forward for the recommendation that will come out of this meeting. I really would like you to think of uh, what we've done so far. I guess there is a, a, an element of uh, capitalization on what we've done on stock taking on what we've done uh, through this uh, collaboration. But if we look at the future, uh, how can we join our forces? What kind of innovation uh, do you have in your research center that we can better leverage? And at the same time, from our side, how can we join forces across the different divisions who are working on drought uh, to see how we can uh, uh, identify some key bottlenecks, prioritize, and then uh, define some specific areas of, uh, of work and, uh, and collaboration. In terms of innovation, I mean, you all have in mind, uh, I mean, what you are doing in your laboratories and, uh, you know, working on crop tolerant uh, uh, varieties on uh, drip irrigation, et cetera, et cetera. But here, of course, uh, we can think also beyond that. We can think also of how to leverage the power of artificial intelligence. How can we use maybe large language models for improving advisory services. So let's think of pushing the boundaries of, uh, of innovation and science and see what is available What is available today, what is coming next uh, that we could use so that uh, uh, we can uh, do a better job basically and answering these uh, very important uh, challenges. So, um, so this is 
really what I wanted to say after this. Uh, so I'm very eager to hear from your recommendation of uh, today's discussion. I've got this offer of uh, to the technical division saying you can uh, um, rely on us or you can come to us to see how we can better partner so that we identify the best solution. I've got this uh, uh, proposal of uh, pushing the boundaries and looking beyond what we already know, looking at what are the emerging technologies and innovation we can see uh, uh, coming up and how we can leverage them to address these uh, extremely complicated uh, issues. And again, I would like to welcome you all and thank you very, very much for your participation. And uh, I'm available for any um, uh, questions or even for follow-up discussions uh, if we want to have in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent, for your inspiring words on how to integrate innovation in our work, especially addressing impact of drought and agriculture. Uh, next, we, we will uh, definitely provide you the recommendations comes out of uh, this meeting, and uh, this will be integrated as part of our work plan for the future. Uh, so next, uh, let me uh, invite uh, Mr. Piero Genovesi uh, from ISPRA to provide the opening remarks. Piero, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting us. It's really a pleasure to be here. And also, it's a pleasure to meet people in person because that helps exchanging ideas. So I think we all have been uh, used to meet remotely in the past years, but I think meeting uh, physically is always an added value. And uh, thank you also for your words. I think it's a very good um, uh, call for uh, trying to have a very focused discussion today and in the uh, coming months of work of this cooperation. As you know, ISPRA joined later in the MOU, but uh, we believe that this is really an important uh, uh, issue, this cooperation among uh, the key uh, research institutions working in Italy on uh, innovation, agriculture uh, and environmental protection. That is our uh, mandate. So ISPRA uh, is the Institute for Environmental Protection and Research. Uh, we believe that this can help uh, um, uh, designing some of uh, the, the ways for addressing these huge challenges that we have ahead. Um, unfortunately, in Italy, our decision makers have uh, seen recently how important and how urgent it is to address these problems that are not only, of course, a national challenge, but are a global challenge. And I think it's also important, and this is what uh, ISPRA will, will try to do in the future, to combine the need for addressing uh, uh, the challenge of water stress, but also the need for a better environmental protection, uh, because this is uh, definitely an urgent matter. We took part to the negotiation for arriving to the UN uh, Global Biodiversity Framework in Montreal last year. And we believe that putting together, keeping together the challenges of a sustainable development and environmental protection, a safe environment uh, uh, can help uh, also the communities of the world to have a safe uh, life, uh, uh, water, food, uh, and uh, health. And I think that the message of the SDG that all these elements are uh, are together uh, is uh, it's really important. I apologize because in three quarters of an hour, I have a meeting, a meeting with the cabinet of the Minister of Agriculture. So I will need to leave uh, just after my very brief uh, remark, but there are all the colleagues from ISPRA that will follow the discussion and will uh, present uh, some of the results. So I, I thank Anna Luisa, Stefano Mariani, Giovanni Braga, that are part of a team working on this issue, also with uh, uh, Martina Bussettini. Uh, as I said on the beginning, I think the message you gave us to try to be concrete, uh, to design, a, to, to write a work program, and to think of how to put together the skills that we all have for providing, uh, I wouldn't say solutions, but at least uh, ways to go ahead, not only for finding ways to reduce uh, uh, the problems that the global community is facing, but also to monitor what, what's happening because we need to track progress. This is what we learned from the past, uh, also from failures. Unless we have solid tools for uh, monitoring progress, uh, um, 
it's difficult to show to decision makers when uh, uh, we need to be more ambitious and when we need to change direction in our efforts. So um, I really, I'm really glad uh, of this opportunity of exchange of ideas. And uh, I, I really believe that innovation in one of the key tools for improving agriculture and uh, water management in the future. And uh, we all know now that we need to have a sustainable future. And we, I hope that this dialogue uh, with, among the researchers, but also uh, with an important role of FAO that has a key uh, role globally to provide uh, uh, solutions for the communities uh, uh, that struggle with uh, food safety and water safety is essential. So thank you again for this opportunity. And, uh, and uh, I really wish the discussion of today uh, brings uh, some ideas how to improve the efforts that we can provide to you and to the global community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piero. And as you know, uh, environment protection related aspects are integrated as part of the one of the major areas of cooperation, which focuses on uh, uh, biodiversity conservation as well as ecosystem quality. So that's the one of the areas of work. And uh, we are really looking forward to strengthen this collaboration uh, from this discussion. So next, uh, uh, let me invite uh, Mr. Massimo Ineta, our good colleague, and I have been uh, contacting him almost on a weekly basis. And he's very instrumental to strengthen this collaboration not only between FAO and uh, NIA, and also between FAO and the other uh, research institutions. Maximo, please. Thanks so much, Silva, and uh, uh, thanks for hosting this uh, uh, event. It's a very pleasure for me to be here. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we can see that uh, the organization of the event uh, uh, came after a long period uh, uh, in which we work to a new program, a new program uh, uh, where we identify the seven different uh, 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 topics for our cooperation, for our collaboration between FAO and the Italian research uh, uh, institution. Uh, so uh, just uh, uh, something about the history of this collaboration, because uh, we signed our memorandum of understanding in uh, 2015. And uh, uh, so the, the partnership promotes uh, the implementation of activities uh, aiming at raising awareness, develop capacity and foster the uh, exchange of knowledge in uh, uh, different areas, such as agriculture, climate change, food quality, nutrition, sustainable food systems, value chain development through a systemic approach to local uh, innovation, land and water sustainable uh, management, biodiversity conservation, and ecosystem quality. Also assessment of innovation in rural development programs. So all these uh, aspects are strongly uh, present in the framework uh, uh, of the NEA, Department of Sustainability, and are focused on innovation. For us, innovation on all these topics is uh, very important for the development of uh, this uh, uh, cooperation. And since 2015, uh, the partner institutions collaborating in the organization and the delivery of a series of uh, events on topics connected to the sustainable development goals, such as uh, advances of events, uh, uh, trends, integrated pest management. I remember it was the first uh, uh, meeting that we organized here in FAO, uh, also on healthy diets uh, through sustainable food system and environmental sustainability and agri-food system in the Mediterranean. The International Year of Pulses, uh, including a focus on its nutritional and health benefits. And uh, uh, then prevention and reduction of uh, soil pollution and contamination, agroecology, water scarcity, access to safe, reliable, and sustainable uh, water, benefits of the Mediterranean diet, and sustainable agri-food system, but also food loss and waste reduction. So uh, 
uh, another important aspect of this collaboration was the development of a mechanism of, for young scientists uh, from developing countries to train uh, with uh, the Italian research institution and the implementation of study uh, visits. During the period 2018-2020, the uh, cooperation promoted the, the secondment of uh, three visiting scientists to EMEA from Burkina Faso, Republic of Congo, and Cameroon to work in the field of soil quality restoration and the macrobiome application for sustainable agriculture uh, systems. And since 2019, Enea is involved with FAO in activities related to the One Planet Network under the Sustainable Food System Program. Uh, in particular, the collaboration is uh, on the project uh, Sustainable Diets in the Context of uh, Sustainable Food Systems, uh, led by FAO and UNEP, and which Enea is one of the partners. So as uh, I said in 2022, to 2023, we have shared a new work program with the seven areas uh, of cooperation. And today is the occasion to celebrate the World Day to Combat Drought and Desertification with an event on innovation for drought and agriculture. So, NEA is involved in research and technological innovation on these topics to achieve sustainability and avoid economic and social uh, crisis. Uh, for this reason, we are going uh, to continue this uh, collaboration focused on uh, participatory tools, methods, and approaches to include innovation in the agenda of sustainability. Thanks so much. Thank you, Massimo, for providing this very rich historical perspective of our collaboration and also outlining the importance of the seven areas of uh, uh, cooperation for this ongoing MOU. Thank you very much. And ne next, uh, well, uh, um, I would uh, invite uh, Giorgio Matushi uh, to provide the opening remarks on behalf of Siena. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you to all and uh, thank you for uh, the, the common organization of this uh, very important um, workshop on innovation on drought of agriculture. It is my pleasure to give uh, all of you the welcome by the National Research Council of, uh, of Italy. Um, that is the largest public research organization in Italy. And uh, um, it's made up of seven departments. The department that is most involved in this memorandum of understanding is the Department on uh, Biology, Agriculture, and Food Sciences. And uh, in this respect, uh, it's uh, dealing with uh, all the, the research uh, that are uh, around the overall topic of, uh, of food, agriculture, and, uh, and also forestry. And um, it's... 900 uh, researcher working researcher and technician working on this and uh, and actually it's it's nice that um, the uh, the different institutes involved in the department are engaged in in nearly 60 research project with uh, uh, developing countries uh, mostly from uh, the the south rim of, of mediterranean but uh, but not only and uh, at least uh, 25 of those projects are related to drought and agriculture issues on different perspectives. And I think it's uh, it's good that uh, we have this uh, common uh, event here with the, all the uh, Italian research institutions, because only by a, a, a multifunctional uh, approach is possible to address uh, in the proper way the, uh, the relevant issue related to uh, the, the increasing drought, uh, drought and, uh, and the climate crisis that is uh, impacting our agriculture. And, uh, and I think this cooperation, it's really uh, relevant for that because the, the, the different uh, uh, expertises and the different uh, institution can provide uh, different perspective and uh, an overall global approach to address the, this in, a, in the sustainable development uh, uh, network. And uh, what I want to say is that also 
this is really important, uh, apart that is the memorandum where we said it between FAO and the Italian Research uh, Institution, but that is within FAO because uh, uh, we can maybe bring some innovation, we can share our expertise, we can do some capacity building, but we have a lot to learn from what we can, uh, uh, what has been uh, in the uh, in the years applied in other countries that maybe are also more uh, impacted by, by drought. Uh, we are feeling this now also in Italy, but surely, in uh, in Africa and not only this impact it's really it's really uh, serious and uh, actually it is possible uh, it's actually sure that some of the solutions that have been developed in the other countries can be uh, brought together and innovated in a way to, to deliver uh, a sustainable food uh, food production and um, and. I think it's really important in that sense that uh, we are all working towards uh, a open sharing of the result, particularly on these, uh, let's say, life supporting uh, activities like uh, agriculture and how agriculture can be made more uh, adapted and more uh, uh, and, and less uh, uh, subject to the impact of, of, of drought and, and global work. In that sense, uh, it's also relevant that uh, there are a lot of collaboration between the institute and the, and the countries in the in the world, the countries that are uh, all uh, under FAO. Uh, these are more than 150 further to the project, and uh, I think we should build on that in a way that uh, the sustainable development goals are uh, are uh, more and more uh, advanced in their. Uh, implementation, uh, the the zero hunger. It's uh, it's really the the base of all sustainable goals because without uh, uh, eating there is nothing else. So I think this is also really relevant that we are together here. Uh, also, actually, as the first uh, event of this new uh, 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 renovated uh, memorandum of understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Giorgio, for uh, stressing the importance of knowledge sharing. And of course, uh, this particular event is one such event uh, to promote knowledge sharing, not only between um, CNR and FAO, and also with other Italian research institutions. And we are looking forward to continue this uh, work. And uh, now let me uh, invite uh, Mr. Filberto Altobelli from CREA to provide the opening remarks on behalf of CREA. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for hosting us in these important events that uh, we are uh, glad to attend. Um, CREA is uh, one of the main institutes, maybe the main institute of agricultural research and activities, and uh, we are very involved in all aspects of the environmental issues, and in particular, on the water sector. Um, this is uh, one aspect that uh, we stress a lot during uh, the years. But let me uh, stress this aspect to relate really to the agriculture water management an issue that we are uh, through during these uh, years. At the end of the May, the long-term drought that uh, as a fact Europe should not seem abating, especially in Western Mediterranean and areas. Indeed, a drought that can be tested back nearly two years persist in several parts of southwest Europe. Also, maize drains, in some cases even flooding as this year, have a reduced reduce, uh, accumulated short and medium term deficit. Above average rainfall in Italy has also been beneficial, but is not been uh, destructive as this year in Emilia Romagna. Uh, over where forecast for the coming months for channel temperature in the July center quarter, European Meteorological Center most agreed in indicates a bull average value of all Europe. In Italy, these anomalies could be felt most over the north of the sector and part right in areas. So our alert is very uh, early but based with the new challenge. Indeed, it should not be forgotten that in Italy the problem drought is absolutely recurrent. The 
overheating trend in terms of evidence in Italy, where the ranking of the oldest years of the last two centuries is concentrated in the last decade and includes 2014, 2015, 18, 19, and 22. Even 22 in the first half of the year ranked as the hostess here ever in Italy with a temperature even almost one degree above the historical average. But the division predation along the peninsula was also practically albeit with the 46% increase. So climate change has been accompanied by a clear trend toward tropicalization as during these days we learn especially in Rome, manifested by an increase of frequent violence events, seasonal lengths, short and intense precipitation, and the rapid transition from sunshine and bad weather with significant temperature swings. Crea aware of the challenges this, in this area, conduct research on water resource management in agriculture and combating the certification with the all possible tools and methods, including innovative genetic ones, there are also many experiments conducted under the FAO hearing model on this issue. In recent years, among the initiatives should define, be mentioned the Italian Association of Agroecology in collaboration with CREA, CNR, and in partner with the WMO Regional Training Center of GNR in Italy, and with technical support of the FAO, Land and Water Division, has carried out the three edition of International Advanced School in Agriculture Methodology with more um, than 100 uh, uh, participation. The second edition in part of these three years is a deal with the topic of agricultural methodology for the sustainable water management in agroecosystem. The object of this course was to train and provide young research and professional with up-to-date knowledge on the most advanced method and technology applied to water management in agriculture in the context of climate change. So we are very concentrated on this aim with our friends and colleagues here. Also, the second point I want to stress for here and our colleagues is the, in the work with the, in framework of, of WASAG with our colleague, ISPA colleague and Modo Haas on global framework on water scarcity and agriculture. The Italian cooperation group of WASAG that uh, where there are all these institutions including FAO with the participation of Water Academy launching the project through the technical guidelines for appropriate design and management of press rates irrigation distribution systems. This project will carry out with the Capo Verde in Capo Verde, there will be at the case study area where this technical guide will be implemented in the future. So in conclusion, I believe that the water application in agricultural sector and controlled consumption of water resources represent an important factor in the growth and stabilization of agricultural productivity of, of, over the years. Other ways, the growing trends in sustainable water management contribute to the guarantee of good quality production board for direct consumption and market, generating the economic surplus needs by the rural economies. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liberto, for uh, the opening remarks on behalf of uh, CREA. Uh, so this collaboration will benefit uh, from your work on drought prediction as well as drought management and so your engagement in WASA related uh, activities. So thank you very much. And we have five minutes before start of the introductory presentation. Uh, let us start with uh, self-introduction uh, from that side, so that who we are and uh, how we are connected to this MOU and what is the type of work we do. So let's start from there. Uh... Good morning to everyone. My name is Nicola Colonna from Enea. And I'm a senior researcher, I'm an agronomist, I work in the department of Massimo Giannetta dealing with water issues. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anna Maria Bevivino from Enea. 
I'm uh, head of the Laboratory for Sustainability of Ivy Food System, and uh, I'm a microbiologist. Good morning, everybody. My name is Gianfranco Diretto from Menea. I'm the head of the Laboratory of Biotechnology, and I am a biotechnologist. Morning, my name is Anna Unise. Anna is the name of the family name. Often there is many years that there is an exchange between you. Anyway, uh, I am responsible in the, in the uh, ISPRA, that is the Italian uh, Institute for Environmental uh, Protection and Research, and responsible the unit on global teams and uh, Agenda 2030. I am the focal point of this MOU, and I represent also the scientific and technical correspondent of the UNCCD. And uh, of course, today my interest is also as uh, representing this important convention where uh, that we are celebrating. We celebrated on Saturday, but we are continuing to celebrate. Hi everybody, I'm Antonello Bonfante. I'm a senior researcher at the CNR. I'm an adult pedologist. I'm working with the modeling of soil plant atmosphere systems, expert in, uh, in crop adaptation to climate change, and I'm and I head uh, to a laboratory on, to support precision agriculture. For this reason, I'm here today. Good morning to everyone. I'm Massimiliano Pasqui from CNR. I'm a physicist. I'm working in the observatory for droughts and seasonal forecasts at CNR. Thank you very much. Good morning, Vieri Tarchiani, Institute for Bioeconomy of the National Research Council. Uh, I deal my research principally with the climate services for agriculture in developing countries, mainly in sub-Saharan Africa. Thanks. Morning. My name is Claudia Fontana. I work uh, in uh, Crea. Uh, I am um, colleague for uh, Alto Belli <laughs> Filiberto. And um, I, my job is uh, for agriculture and uh, erosion uh, uh, problem in uh, agriculture. Uh, I, Silvia Socciarelli. Uh, for CREA uh, researcher. <laughs> Good morning. I am Andrea Visca. I am a researcher at uh, Enea and I work with uh, the, the Dr. Vivino. And I am a biotechnologist, uh, especially in uh, molecular biology. Good morning, everyone. I'm Luciana Di Gregorio. I'm a researcher uh, at Enea in the Agri-Food Quality Safety um, Lab with uh, Anna Maria Bevivino and Massimo Iannetta, and I'm a biologist. Good morning all, Federico Sbarra, PhD student uh, in EA and uh, UNITO. I'm working on soil microbiome and extending my knowledge uh, to soil in general. So nice to meet you all. Good morning, everybody. I'm Federica Tenaglia, and I'm technologist at the Department of Biology, Agriculture, and Food Science of the CNR, and I support the management of the Memorandum of Understanding. Good morning. I'm Atena Di Paola. Um, I'm a researcher at the CNR Institute for Bioeconomy. I deal with uh, agrometeorology, modeling, climate change, and uh, I'm a staff member of uh, the Drought uh, Observatory with my colleagues Massimiliano Pasqui and Edmondo Giuseppe. Thank you. Edmondo Giuseppe is me. I'm also from the Institute of Bioeconomy. I'm a statistical climatologist. Hello, I'm Alessandro Dell'Aquila from Enea. I'm the head of uh, Climate Modeling and Impact Laboratory. And I am a physicist and uh, climatologists and they work on climate models mm -hmm. and uh, climate service. Hello everybody, I'm Ombretta Presenti, I'm a research in the agro um, biotechnology and agro East industry division in the laboratory of uh, biotechnology. 
Good morning. I'm Karen Obili. I'm a mechanist and uh, I'm working in Enea uh, in uh, Agri Food Quality and Safety Laboratory. And uh, I am also the, um, the leader of the food safety and food waste uh, and loss um, in the, within the ISHAS platform, that is the uh, Italian Circular Economy Food Safety Platform. Good morning, I'm Antonella Del Fiore. I'm food technologist and researcher at the Enea Food Quality and Safety Laboratory. Good morning, I'm Chiara Vicini. I come from Inspra. I am a researcher and uh, I am an expert uh, to enhance and maintain the biodiversity in agrosystem. And I have a decennial experience on the effect of the climate change on agriculture. Hello, good morning all and uh, sorry for my delay. <laughs> my name is Massimo Canalito, I'm an agronomist and food technologist uh, of uh, Agricultura Vita, that is the uh, training and, and uh, research center of the National uh, Italian Confederation of Farmers. Uh, and I'm representing two projects, UA dedicated to uh, how to cope with the climate change by water management, and the other one is for digit that is focused on digital technologies tackling uh, climate change. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Vera Berger, Senior Land and Water Officer, uh, leading the land team in the Land and Water Division. Good morning, I'm Silvia Lisciani, researcher at uh, CREA Center for Food and Nutrition. I work in the field of the food composition and I am a focal point for the MOU in the area of food and nutrition quality. Good morning, my name is Maria, I am an economist and I am working in the land and water division here in the field. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Xin Xin, I'm Phil Knight, Maria and uh, also many colleagues here. I'm working in uh, land, and land and water division here in Yafeo. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Kwame Sasa. Uh, I'm an irrigation engineer and I'm uh, engaged in the irrigation project at land and water division. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Stefania Giusti. I'm a program officer working here at FAO together with other colleagues from the Land and Water Division, and I'm part of the Agricultural Water Management Team. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Livia Pizer, also Land and Water Division, working in particular on the Water Data Team and on a project that uses remote sensing information to monitor water productivity in agriculture. Nice to be. Hello, good morning. Virginie Gillet, Land and Water Officer, uh, same team, Water Data here in FAO. Good morning, I am uh, Jeppe Hogeveen and I'm a uh, hydrologist at the Land and Water Division. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paola Fiore. I am um, head of the unit of uh, institutional and international relations at CREA a part of the memorandum on the Senate, and also a focal point for the memorandum with Paul. Good morning, everyone. Michela Marinelli, Land and Water Division, Environmental Engineer, and um, I'm working in the Integrated Monitoring Initiative for SDG 6. And in this framework, I had the pleasure to collaborate with ISPRA last year for the disaggregation of uh, the level of water stress as DG642 by River Basin. Thank you. Good morning, I'm uh, Federica Colucci. I'm an agronomist. I work at Enea and I'm involved in, uh, I support the memorandum with uh, cross activities. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Itzalinti Maria Donati. I'm a PhD student in landscape and environment in the La Sapienza University of Rome. And now I'm collaborating with Filiberto Altobelli in the Capo Verde case study. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Marika Ferrari, <clears throat> and uh, I work at the CREA. I'm a biologist uh, and uh, with a PhD in uh, nutrition physiology. I'm involved in the field of, of food consumption model, in particular to develop uh, sustainable dietary patterns, starting uh, from uh, food consumption, actually food consumption. I'm uh, responsible of a sustainable chapter in the Italian food based dietary guidelines. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Giovanni Braca. Uh, I work in ISPRA. I am an hydraulic engineer and an hydrologist. And now uh, we are uh, on the, we have, our research is about uh, water balance at the at national level. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Stefano Mariani from ISPRA. I'm a mathematician and I work on uh, hydrometeorological streams and uh, water resources. And my I'm the focal point, the national focal point in the European ad hoc task group on water scarcity and drought for in the framework of the Water Framework Directive. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Selvaraj Ramasamy. I'm senior agricultural officer working with the Office of Innovation, working with uh, Mr. Vincent Martin. Uh, I'm a FAO focal point for the MOU between FAO and the Italian Research Institutes, together with Julia and uh, Leonardo from, uh, from our partnership division. And of course, this particular event is uh, technically led by our colleagues in land and water. We are just facilitating from our side. So I thank our land and water colleagues for their help active participation and also taking forward uh, the program of work on uh, drought and agriculture. So thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, uh, my name is Chiara Lisi and I'm a biologist working at Enea in uh, soil microbiology. Julia Palestini, communication specialist for the power piece of innovation most of you know me and I give support as Sandra said to this time you and I'm very glad of it. Thank you. With this sorry. Uh, oh yeah. May I thanks at, in, in the name of our, our our colleagues Julia because she has been so helpful in this period that we are to support our cooperation and our activities. Really, you know, that uh, is a really, it's a real feeling that I will express the name of the CNR, CREA, and INEA, and myself as well. Thanks, Julie. Uh, uh, thank you so much for. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. And with this, we thank all of our institutional focal points uh, for giving us the inspiring opening remarks uh, for uh, this event. So thank you so much, all the focal points. So thank you. So let's uh, move on to the uh, the technical presentation which is an uh, introduction to the event uh, by uh, Mr. Gion uh, Paolo uh, Ceseretti, uh, coordinator of the ASVAS Working Group for Goal 2 of the 2030 Agenda, Naples University. Uh, yeah, over to you.
Good morning, uh, to all people that participate to this uh, very interesting convention. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Massimo Iannetti because he invited me. He is a very old, good friend of mine uh, from time from the University of, in, of Naples. So I am very glad to stay, to stay here. And just I want to remember you. Uh, I am an economist, so I am not a technologist. So my approach to the presentation will be a little bit different for uh, what maybe you are acquainted to. Uh, I gave this title. Uh, First of all, I, I am here uh, as a representative of uh, ASVIS. ASVIS is the Italian uh, institution that promoting uh, sustainable development in Italy. I am at the co-coordinator with Professor Angelo Riccaboni for goal two. So I gave this title towards the new food frontier Innovation for Drought and Agriculture. Uh, this title uh, combines three key words. The first is goal two of Agenda 2030. The second is climate change and drought. And the third is innovation. Innovation that together with public policies and uh, social responsibility, are they responsible to improve goal two and as well as other 16 goals to move towards sustainable development? Uh, the thesis that I, I want to uh, support here is that uh, Agenda 23rd of the United Nations can be seen as a lever to empower society towards sustainable development. But now we have to confront with drought and we are asking if and how drought can make, can be a risk to reach a goal to as well, sustainable development strategy of the United Nations. But in this, uh, we are at FAO, so another important thing to remember is that drought is uh, at, put at risk just the uh, improved countries of the, of the world. That they, they are strong dependently from agriculture. So the demand that we have to uh, uh, sustain here is which are the relationship between droughts and what we I call the new front frontier that now I, I will explain you. Uh, what I mean for new food frontier. Uh, as you know, uh, goal two is divided in four uh, parts, ending world hunger, reaching food safety, improving nutrition and promoting sustainable agriculture. Well, I, I say that uh, this means, uh, lastly, that we have, we have to have the capacity to connect the, a new uh, right to food with sustainability of well-being. Uh, why I say that we have a, a new right to food? Because usually in our society, we have a segmented approach to food. Uh, food access, food quality, food proximity and food leisure. Uh, what we have to do is to have a, a not segmented approach to right to food. So in this way, I call a new right to food. We have to combine and we have to see how the new right of food can be combined. It must be connected 
with the sustainable development. Uh, what means sustainable development? In, in 2011, the OECD with this document, How is Life, presented this, this document where the crucial point was demonstrating that uh, the uh, re, sustainable, sustainability of well-being depends upon the capacity of preserving the full capital stock, human capital, social capital, economic capital, and natural capital. So the, to move towards sustainable development, we, have the, we must have the capacity to preserve the capital stocks. So the new frontier of food means the capacity of connecting the new right to food to preserving capital stocks. Well, now if you look at the drought, which are the main uh, results, the main efforts? Of course, we have a drop in production rates. This means rising food prices. And this means a worsening of an unintegrated approach to well-being in affluent countries. In other words, we have the problem that up to now, we still have this segmented approach, but dropping production and rising prices, this will worsen this kind of approach. In impoverished areas, famine, food scarcity, and migration. And lastly, drought affect to the ability of this country to, de to develop from an economic and social point of view because they are uh, many, many, very much based on agriculture. So uh, we have to, uh, the result that drought can put at risk the outcome to reach sustainable de development and uh, increase the, the distance from new food frontier. But we have to see uh, this problem from two different point of view, which are main responsible for global warming and which are the, the countries that are, will be affected more from the result. So, you know uh, the ecological footprint better than I do. Uh, you know the CO2 emission. And if you look at these two uh, maps, you can see that it is easily to see that uh, developed countries are the main responsible of this result. On the other side, we have many asymmetries the dealing with the impact of drought. The first is that if you look at this map, the global aridity uh, hit mainly uh, impoverished countries. Then we have to look at another problem. At, in 2050, the, what we expected in the, in the dynamic of the population, uh, it is expected that we pass from 7 million billions of people to 10 billions. But this is a different trend in different areas of the world. And again, if you look at this map, poor countries will be main hit from this kind of dynamic. So on one side, you have developed country responsible for drought, climate change and drought. And on the other side, what will be the, the effect on this poor country? But there is another asymmetry in the reaction capacity of these countries, because the investment in research and development is much less in these countries. And then also the investment in human capital is much less. So this is the result. On one side, developed country hit on drought, 
of global uh, global warming and the other side other are the victim we can say so uh, in this scenario we have to ask which is the role of uh, innovation to favor to uh, to move from now the present situation to towards the new fruit frontier so we have to uh, look at the problem from three points of view methodology objectives and strategies uh, i believe that we have uh, th there is the necessity uh, for an integrated approach to innovation and this must be based on co international cooperation that uh, hopefully hopeful uh, I believe that could concrete in a, a global interactive platform where all innovation can be gathered and re, a, give, uh, made to available to all countries in the world. Which are the objectives of innovation activity? Uh, because what we said before, rich countries north of the world, south of the world. Uh, we, the first objective that we have to reach is we have to fight, we need innovation to fight global warming. On the other side, we need innovation to produce for drought, for produce food in drought condition. And ultimately, we need innovation to empower society to access innovation. These are the three objectives. Which are the strategy to go to in this direction? So if we believe, as we will see now, that uh, uh, decision models are the main responsible of the global uh, warming, we have to shift paradigm to mitigate the effect of climate change but we need new technology to adapt agriculture and we need innovation in uh, uh, educational frameworks so to leave to reach the, the result to have a level of innovation to empower food for sustainability what I mean, uh, we don't have to look at the problem of food uh, as food. We have to look at the problem as food for sustainability, food for well-being sustainability. So which are the implementation of these uh, strategies? Well, if you look at this scheme, just I scratch the problem, uh, we see that uh, the main of the responsible are actual, the present decision model. The, we have a globalization, we have a, a, a globalization I call at the ge variable geometry. We have territorial government that acts in some way. We have supporting uh, sector, so research uh, institute uh, that not, not always go in the right the, the direction to help these countries. And also we have the non-profit uh, sector that they do not actually the, the, the just the good advocacy to push society in the right so, so direction. So the result is that production consumption model governance of, of the full capital stock uh, have this result weakening the carbon sinks greenhouse uh, gas emission and weak resilience strategy so we have the global warming but this global warming has the effect to hit on the full capital stock so put at risk the sustainability of well-being in general and in particular, the the well the possibility to go 
uh, to solve the problem of goal two. So they hit on the availability, on quality, proximity, and peculiarity. Then, uh, what do we mean then for paradigm shift? This means that the innovation has helped in improving availability, quality, proximity, and peculiarity of flow capital stocks. Then innovation has to help to find new products, new processes to minimize negative externalities, and innovation has to help to find new action, new resilience strategy to minimize these externalities. So, which is the general framework? Is the Pierce-Turner uh, model. Pierce-Turner model uh, that they uh, put forward in 1990. Uh, in this model, we can see, we modified this model that the supporting sector, so innovation, has to the, the very responsible duty to hit to help uh, capital stock uh, production models, consumption model to reach the result that we have discussed before. So uh, this is for the shift of paradigm, but what innovation has to do for from a technical and economic point of view, producing necessary food stocks in condition of water shortage. For example, precision agriculture and biotechnologies. But this is not sufficient. Uh, just for what we said about the, uh, incapacity, the asymmetry of developing countries in uh, investment in research, and de development, but in particular, investing in the ca human capital, there is the necessity to uh, put forward uh, to find a new figure, the innovation facilitator, which is the aim of this innovation facilitator, uh, to transfer this innovation, we need a new professional profile that is able to advocate society educate society and advise society. To do this, we need that educational institution must offer knowledge and skill for the institutionalization of innovation facilitator. So uh, what uh, we, how we can conclude that agenda 2030, goal two, climate change, are the three problems that innovation uh, institution has to solve. Mitigating global warming, combining right to food with well-being sustainability, adapting food production to draw, and supporting impoverished areas for access to innovation. These are some reflections that uh, I offer to you for your uh, convention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Cesaretti. Uh, sorry, but the Severage will give me the rule of a chair of this. <laughs> Uh, and so I think that uh, uh, we have a lot of message to take home from the uh, presentation of Professor Cesaretti. And so the, uh, now we have uh, uh, Stefania Giusti uh, for the first theme on a new solution for irrigation to optimize the management of water resources, director of the division of uh, land and water. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Giannetta, and good morning again, everyone. Also to colleagues who are attending online uh, to this, uh, this event. 
Um, so as I was saying before, my name is uh, Stefania Giusti. I'm a program officer of the agricultural water management team of the London Water Division of FAO. And today I'm here to illustrate you the recently launched FAO drought portal and share some of FAO's work on this topic. Uh, so the Land and Water Division is the responsible technical unit to coordinate FAO drought-related activities. And my team, coordinated by Senior Officer Maher Salman, has developed the FAO drought portal as a knowledge sharing hub to support countries and stakeholders in enhancing drought resilience in agriculture and improving food security. This work is also part of a Jeff-funded project in which we collaborate as FAO with other global partners like the UNCCD, WMO, and others. So the main idea behind the portal is to share the extensive experience of FAO on integrated drought management, or IDM as we often call it, with a global audience that may not be fully aware of tools, practices, and ongoing initiatives for drought and agriculture. Because such extensive experience is often scattered among field applications and sectoral actions, we moved along two directions. On one side, we collated all of FAO developed tools for IDM in agriculture. And on the other, we gave access to FAO project database for the consultation of FAO activities on drought and agriculture. The portal is designed uh, essentially to respond to four key objectives. The first one evidently is to share knowledge, not only of FAO as individual agency, but also of similar platforms of partner entities, like for instance, the drought toolbox by UNCCD and others. The portal is also built to contribute to both improve resilience and drought preparedness and to respond to emergency by providing access to tested tools and approaches for IDM. Last but not least, the, the portal serves as a tracker for drought financing. This is actually a newly added function, which is still very strategic, and I will illustrate it later in more details, although, must be said, it's still in the beta version in the portal. So the objective of enhancing resilience is addressed by providing resources along the three pillars of IDM established since 2013 by the global community as the three main pathways of preparedness. You may be familiar with them already. Under these page and sub pages, you can thus find items clustered as uh, early warning systems and monitoring, vulnerability and impact assessment, and response and mitigation. The key message we always highlight as FAO is the need to shift from a reactive and crisis-based to a proactive and risk-based approach in drought management. This section of the portal responds exactly to this call and provides a wealth of knowledge resources to improve livelihoods resilience according to the three pillars of IDM. So what kind of products can you find in the portal and how can it support you in your daily work in drought management as we hope? The main categories you will come across are listed here and they are essentially of three kinds, FAO projects, FAO toolkits and FAO success stories. As projects, we included in the portal the massive project database of FAO, more than 2,000 records addressing drought. Projects are aggregated by pillar and summarized with activities, practices, lessons learned, and other valuable indicators. This database, I would like to highlight this. This database is the repository of over 20 years of FAO projects that so far were not accessible to a global audience and can now be consulted through the portal. In the toolkits category, you can find listed and directly accessible the software, web applications, and digital solutions developed at FAO to manage drought in agriculture, including Vapor, which is the uh, tool developed by my colleagues from the data team here. Again, all of these tools are categorized by pillars. 
Finally, the success story category of products displays any relevant field operation and on the ground action performed by FAO to support drought resilience of communities worldwide. Moving ahead, the portal showcases FAO's work in emergency situations. As part of its mandate, the organization supports drought prone countries and rural communities affected by drought events through the provision of rapid response intervention and the application of mitigation plans. The page here in the portal gives access to details of FEO projects, which can be filtered by different categories and location. The portal collects knowledge resources also for emergency response actions. Practitioners and stakeholders can navigate to review practices applied by FAO in post drought context and identify solutions that may apply to their cases. The map shows location of FAO ongoing and past operations with links to detailed information. Items and products under this se section include crisis driven responsive actions and toolkits for post disaster management. Field experiences to respond in emergency context are illustrated through project best practices and results from lessons learned. Responsive approaches are outlined as part of the global FAO approach to drought emergency and can be thoroughly reviewed by clicking on the pins on the map where you can find the exact location of the intervention. In addition to giving access to FAO project database for drought preparedness and drought emergency as illustrated so far, the portal also contributes to global knowledge on IDM and shares contents to enable the implementation of relevant policies under the section policy to action and to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer learning under the learning section. The main objective once more is to open up learning opportunities for all and provide in a one-stop shop all of FAO and not only FAO, learning materials related to all dimensions of drought management. So starting from the learning tab, the different categories of products can be found for knowledge sharing that go from the e-learning courses to events, being them either global or country actions, as well as reference publication. The first category of products, the e-learning courses for self-training, are developed by FAO with research partners. The courses are self-paced and anyone can directly link on them and follow the courses at any time. It is also present a link to the website of the Italy funded Building Forward Better initiative that Mr. Altobelli knows very well, uh, where additional training material for IDM were developed. In the portal, moreover, FAO events are included and present global and country level meetings, workshops, and high level engagements to know more about FAO's activities. Under publication, a number of technical and outreach products are presented, whether they're related to events or as standalone uh, digital materials. Am I late? Oh. Um, the portal, it needs to be mentioned has been designed also to respond to the mandate of the UNCCD COP15, which called for the translation of drug policy into action. FAO then embarked in a broad consultative process, still ongoing, to identify relevant indicators to monitor progress towards the establishment of drug resilient systems. The resulting framework will cluster these indicators into three categories natural resources and ecosystems, food production systems, and economic, economy and livelihoods for the monitoring and impact assessment of interventions on environment, societies, and economies. The last, I would say, critical section of the portal looks into the financial component of drought management, another important consideration of UNCCD COP15. It should be mentioned that existing statistical tools for the financial analysis of investment generally refer to broader climate finance encompassing drought investment. So the drought finance tracker is the first analytical tool to examine trends of investment and financial commitment purely related 
to drought. The tracker is built on the OECD database of official development assistance programs and presents statistics on deployed investment and financial allocation by different indicators. The ultimate objective of the tracker is to support decision makers and donor partners in the definition of their resource mobilization strategies for improved drought management. So here we present a short video of the tracker, which, as I mentioned before, is still in the beta version, so I will briefly demonstrate it. So under the statistics tabs, financial data are included for drought related projects. The data set, as you can see, is global and can be filtered by region, country, year, sector, gender objectives, and financial instrument. Results can then be saved and downloaded in PDF and Excel format. It should be said that you can find uh, uh, in, uh, in this uh, portal uh, statistics uh, uh, related to drought development finance for the last 20 years from 2000 to 2021. So moving ahead, um, the overview tab provides key statistics visualized as graphics, uh, hence easily, easily readable at a glance. Uh, the visualization helps to provide to track drought finance according to major parameters, and we noted it to be a good reality check to compare statistics against what is happening on the ground about drought investment. It displays critical information on drought financing by sector, socioeconomic components, and so on. The Explore More tab is a complementary section of the tracker for more nuanced and insightful analysis of drug financial flows. Uh, the last tab of the tracker is the analysis one, which presents readily made statistics. In this case, this is not an interactive uh, uh, page uh, and is based on, and based on filters as the previous one. Because the idea here is to provide key information that should reach decision makers directly. The scope is to better understand the issues that need to be specifically tackled and summarize crucial messages for more effective intervention. In, th in synthesis, I hope I managed to uh, illustrate the main scope of this tool, which we intend to officially launch in the coming weeks. So this was just a preview, but I hope I really managed to gain some uh, interest and I invite you to visit the portal and, uh, and see more about the, the financial tool. Uh, and now, I don't know if we have the time, we also prepare a short video demonstration of the drought portal, so I will briefly go through it. But just to summarize what I've been saying before. So on the home page, as, uh, as mentioned, you can see this is a Jeff funded project and the portal comes with the, the, the collaboration with uh, Jeff and other global partners. The success stories uh, and also uh, on the main page are indicated as uh, global FAO uh, initiatives. Um, under the, the collaboration here as well, I mentioned the drought toolbox, it directly links to the UNCCD drought toolbox. Um, under the highlights that uh, you can uh, click on the pins and go directly to the uh, page where uh, more information are displayed on the interventions on the ground. Um, going, going ahead under the preparedness section of the project, we included uh, toolkits, projects, and resources according to the three pillars of integrated drought management. And uh, uh, you can find here the toolkits, as I mentioned, here is the list, the filtering system where you can uh, um, go through uh, the, the results of the FAO entire database of projects. And you can filter by either keywords or by location if you are interested to see. Here is just a, a short demonstration of how the, the filtering system works. So 
you click on, if you select Ethiopia, you will find all of FAO projects, of course, on drought, uh, carried out in Ethiopia with key indicators and summarized information. Again, this was a database that up until uh, the launching of the portal was only available to FAO staff and was not uh, open to global audience. But we really thought uh, it is uh, very useful. It can be very useful to anyone to reach these resources and see not only what FAO does, but also in partnership with uh, uh, different uh, institutes uh, and other global partners working on, um, on drought and uh, emergency and preparedness, both cases. Um, I think I will not show you the, the rest of the video, but I'd rather go ahead and conclude this. As you can see here, you, we included the QR codes. So if you want, you are free also to take a pictures of the, the codes if you are interested to see the, the portal and also the Building Forward Better initiative, which uh, is an initiative uh, sponsored by the Italian cooperation, where we also included e-courses and learning uh, materials on drought management. And with this, I would like to conclude and thank you all for the attention. So thank you, thank you, Stefania, for introducing FAO products and services, uh, focusing on drought uh, and agriculture. Thank you so much. And now let's uh, move on to the theme two. That's the biotechnologies for biotechnologies for the improvement of performance under water stress conditions. Uh, Gianfranco uh, Diretto. Uh, head of the Biotechnology Laboratory, Biotechnology and uh, Agro-Industry Division, NIA. Okay, again, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, I'm going to, to present you the, all the activities that uh, we are running at ENEA in, uh, um, in the frame of the biotechnology uh, applies to the mitigation of uh, water stress conditions. So just briefly, as mentioned before, uh, I'm the head of the uh, laboratory. And we have this kind of nomenclature, uh, which is referred to, um, let's say, units uh, for biotechnology. Uh, and we cover, in the, in the frame of the biotechnologies, we, we cover all the different colors uh, of the biotechnology since um, we have activities in the, uh, in the field of the uh, agri-food pr production, the so-called the green biotech, uh, then uh, for the pharmaceutical sector, the right biotech, and also uh, for a series of activities uh, uh, on uh, uh, nanotechnologies for the gold uh, uh, biotech. And we are quite devoted to, uh, to have a series of uh, um, facilities for uh, homic sciences that we applied uh, to different uh, um, uh, research activities this as, for instance, in the in the frame of the uh, water stress uh, um, studies. Okay, so we have uh, briefly uh, um, facilities for uh, flow uh, cytometry. We have a. Uh, uh, Okay, we uh, we have uh, uh, scales and facilities for uh, uh, different kind of uh, omics uh, in the. Um, in, in the field of uh, genomics, transcriptomics, and metagenomics, uh, to generate uh, a series of uh, uh, massive data that has to be analyzed then by through uh, different uh, um, bioinformatics approach, and we have facilities for uh, uh, metabolomics, uh, either for bulk uh, that means to analyze uh, by destroying uh, uh, a specific sample all the list of compounds. Um, that can be found in a specific sample or also by special metabolomics in order to uh, detect by in situ uh, analysis uh, the presence and the accumulation of a specific metabolites. Okay, so uh, briefly, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, drought and uh, water stress uh, um, 
uh, effects uh, on uh, on plant. Uh, our perspective is especially uh, focused uh, on the plant metabolism. So here, just to to say very briefly that of course, um, drought and uh, in general all the different water stress uh, conditions they exert a very uh, deep alteration of a plant metabolism. I'm not going too much into the detail, but uh, the 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 massive extent of alteration is uh, um, hitting either a primary and a secondary uh, metabolism with a plant cell that is trying to phasing uh, the uh, the effect of the water uh, stress uh, condition in order to mitigate the negative impact. And so uh, um, here uh, I um, included in this slide uh, the, our approach. So basically we are uh, uh, we are using uh, uh, three different uh, uh, approaches. So one uh, that is uh, based on uh, elicitation and primary and priming. The other one that is trying to exploit the uh, um, genetic uh, diversity. Uh, and then the third one is uh, uh, genetic engineering. So uh, I am going to, to give you a few examples of the ongoing activities that we are uh, uh, doing. Uh, for all the different uh, approaches, but overall, uh, the objective is try to uh, to force the, the plant cell and the overall uh, plant uh, to better um, face uh, and respond to the uh, water stress uh, condition. And so, basically, uh, what we are doing is trying to modulate the plant metabolism uh, in order to uh, uh, achieve uh, uh, idiotypes and in general to, to uh, um, obtain plants that can uh, better respond to the uh, water stress condition while keeping uh, a, a quite good uh, level in terms of nutritional uh, status and so for uh, uh, food quality. Okay, just a few examples. The, the first approach is the elicitation uh, priming. Uh, we are doing these activities in collaboration with other uh, institute and national levels, like the University of Perugia, University of Naples. Uh, the idea is just to use uh, uh, the selenium that can uh, um, promote the um, uh, the the a better tolerance of plants uh, towards uh, a uh, um, a salt and water stress condition. Uh, we have done uh, a series of activities in this per perspective on maize. Um, we published the first uh, paper just to uh, find the, the, the better condition in which selenium can promote uh, the, uh, the uh, water stress resistance as well uh, with uh, uh, at the same time the achievement of products that can have a, a good balance in terms of nutritional uh, um, status and we obtained plants that uh, better face the, the water stress while having also an increase in uh, molecules, uh, uh, pro-nutritional molecules like phenylpropanoids and carotenoids. We are also working um, in the same field, but changing uh, a crop. Now we are working on rapeseed uh, in order to uh, investigate again the effect of selenium and the uh, salt stress uh, uh, at the transgenerational level in also in order to combine uh, metabolite information and epigenetic involvement in uh, the acquired uh, tolerance of these plants. On the other topic, we are uh, working on the uh, application application of a microorganism like uh, uh, trichoderma in the case of tomato. We, we did uh, quite a uh, lot of work uh, showing that trichoderma can prime the uh, resistance to uh, of tomato to different uh, uh, stressors. So we started with uh, uh, biotic stress, uh, stressors, to be honest, but uh, uh, also uh, considering other uh, studies that have been done in the, in the frame of the abiotic stresses like uh, um, water stresses we are also working in uh, um uh, in, in this uh, in this field the second approach is to uh, exploit the availability of uh, a quite uh, good uh, genetic diversity so what we do is to apply uh, uh, the so called association uh, uh, mapping program so uh, briefly the idea is that uh, we will use uh, a quite uh, large uh, um, genetic diversity panel that can be composed by uh, a collection or uh, uh, 
um, population in which we uh, have uh, introgress uh, traits of interest. We start with uh, a massive activity of phenotyping, uh, metabolomics, and other uh, approaches of omics in order then to, to perform by uh, bioinformatic analysis to identify um, genetic materials that can be uh, characterized by improved uh, traits, for instance, for uh, water stress uh, responses, and then for, to identify uh, candidate genes for uh, uh, that uh, um, for that trait. Uh, we have done this activity on se uh, several species. Uh, these activities have, have been the object of a, a series of a, a European uh, funded uh, project, uh, but um, what we uh, uh, were able to, to achieve, for instance, by through the, the, uh, these activities was the identification of uh, uh, varieties of tomato, uh, for instance, which were characterized by uh, improved uh, water stress uh, uh, tolerance, as well also uh, a longer shelf life uh, in terms of their berry. And um, even uh, even uh, of more interest, also uh, varieties that uh, were able to produce uh, uh, fruits with uh, uh, an increased level of pigments like uh, uh, flavonoids and, uh, and carotenoids and also more uh, uh, ABA. So, uh, but basically the, the two approaches that uh, have been described uh, um, uh, have been also uh, uh, merged uh, in a series of, of, activities, of activities that we are uh, running uh, in a tight uh, cooperation with the uh, Agri-Food Sustainability Quality and Safety Laboratory, which is led by Anna Maria Bevino, which is here. Uh, and uh, um, in, in the frame of these activities, the idea is, is to combine the genetic diversity and the application um, of uh, a series of, uh, of microbes, of bacteria, fungi, and so on, alone or in, in, uh, in combination by through the uh, constitution of microbial consortia in order to uh, promote uh, a, a better uh, response of, uh, of plants uh, towards a specific stressor, like in the case, uh, of, for instance, in, in the case of the today event for uh, uh, water stress and uh, uh, drought. Okay, but we are also in approach three, we are using uh, um, uh, genetic engineering. Uh, of, of course, I have to, to, to remark, uh, we are uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, classical uh, transgenics uh, and the GMO uh, products, but uh, uh, using this, uh, this system is, uh, is fundamental to uh, understand the, the uh, modification that can occur. And so uh, these uh, um, this material can provide very useful and powerful uh, uh, information and knowledge uh, that can be then applied, and I will be back to the approach to, to uh, advanced breeding products. So uh, since, uh, as mentioned before, we uh, were dealing with the ABA that uh, was uh, uh, over-accumulated in varieties showing uh, increased tolerance to, to water stress as well, longer shelf life at very level. So we, uh, and the ABA is produced in the frame of the carotenoid uh, metabolism. Uh, what we did, uh, we, we produced a series of uh, uh, mm, lines that, that had increased carotenoids, so from a nutritional point of view, uh, uh, a trait of interest, as well ABA, and we were able, oh, sorry, We were able uh, again to uh, achieve uh, uh, lines uh, that uh, were characterized by uh, increased tolerance to um, um, water stress, as well also a longer shelf life, which is uh, uh, an interesting point of view from uh, uh, an agronomical and commercial uh, um, aspect. Okay, the last point is uh, again in the approach three is take advantage of the um, modern uh, technologies of uh, gene editing in order to improve uh, uh, the, again, at the genetic level, uh, mm, some traits like water stress um, in, uh, and generate novel IDTAP. Again, carotenoid metabolism, but in this case, we are uh, dealing with uh, molecules that are involved uh, in the um, carotenoid catabolism. We have already uh, spoken about uh, uh, ABA, the abscisic acid, but there are uh, uh, so many additional uh, molecules that can uh, um, 
can exert very interesting uh, activities uh, in the perspective of, uh, um, of water stress. And basically, we are now working on stragolactone, zaxinone, uh, beta uh, cyclocitrol in, in, the, in uh, the tomato as a, a first model system, either at the root uh, and again, uh, vegetative uh, uh, part and fruit uh, levels in order to uh, obtain the novel idiotypes that might combine uh, water stress tolerance and uh, fruit quality. Okay, so just uh, in, uh, in, uh, in conclusion, uh, we have different uh, uh, activities uh, in which we uh, take advantage of uh, omic sciences uh, uh, to uh, face and to improve the, the, the tolerance to water stress of different uh, crops of, of interest. Um, and uh, we, we show that we are working on uh, uh, three approaches. The, the first one is uh, uh, using uh, uh, elicitors or a, a microorganism that can prime the uh, defense of of the um of the treated crops, the the other uh, the other approach uh, are uh, uh, based on the uh, genetic intervention that can occur either at advanced breeding uh, level or uh, by using uh, genetic engineering. And we have now a series of uh, lines that have been produced by gene editing uh, that we will uh, um, we will uh, uh, just use uh, uh, to evaluate their uh, response to to water stress. Um, and the idea is just to to generate uh, novel idiotypes that can uh, combine a series of traits of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Gianfranco, for a very interesting presentation focusing on the genetic engineering and uh, biotechnologies uh, in addressing water stress. Uh, just to give uh, an information about FAO's work on this, FAO has published an issue paper last year on genetic uh, gene editing and agri-food systems, uh, covering the role of uh, gene editing in addressing the food uh, insecurity related issues and also other uh, crop improvement related aspects. Uh, we have also published uh, a document which focuses on the low-tech biotechnologies that was published in 2013, and that is uh, being revised and updated, and it will be published soon this year, uh, which focuses on the biotechnologies application in uh, smallholder agriculture, uh, including mostly focusing on the low-tech uh, biotechnologies. So thank you very much, and uh, we will share that information as well to you so that uh, we will uh, have a further discussion on this topic. And uh, we will also connect to other colleagues working on biotechnologies in different divisions, especially plant production and protection, and also FAO Joint Center in Vienna, FAO IEA Joint Center in Vienna, forestry and fishery studies. So thank you so much. And let's move on to the uh, theme three, which focuses on droughts, water stress, water availability, current situation, and what to expect in the future due to climate change and uh, human pressures. And we invite uh, Martina um, Busetteni, Giovanni Braca, and uh, Stefano Mariani uh, from ISPRA to make a presentation on the topic. Today we have Stefano Mariani presenting the, on behalf of the three of, the, of, the, of this group of three people working on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for for the introduction and for uh, for the kind introduction, and thanks for the for inviting us to present our our activities, uh, which more related to monitoring and assessment about uh, water resources and and drought uh, and drought and, and uh, water scarcity condition uh first of all i wanted to mention uh one of the technology that we are uh, developing in uh, in ispra and uh, are on the oh sorry yeah. uh, which are which which have uh, developed in ispra which is at uh, the basis of uh, all our uh, assessment and estimates about uh, uh, drought, water scarcity, and water resources. Uh, this is a, an hydrological water budget model called the Big Bang, 
uh, which provides uh, a one kilometer monthly estimate over Italy of a water budget component, components and other hydrological variables. And uh, this is based on hydrometeorological data, official data provided by region uh, autonomous provinces, uh, also from historical data. Uh, together with some uh, uh, um, national layer information for soils, uh, hydrogeological characteristics, and, uh, and soil sealing rates based on uh, Copernicus data. Uh, based on this model, we have estimated from 1951 to uh, 2022. Uh, there is a, 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 a an update every every year the the water budget component of the logical variable and also based on this uh, on this uh, on this model we also done some initial uh, um, studies about uh, uh, impact on uh, water ability uh, based on different uh, climate change scenarios And most um, in starting with the some of the, the, the fundings, uh, let's uh, start with uh, total precipitation and uh, how to, uh, and uh, the impact uh, of the deficit in precipitation that we had uh, last year in Italy. If you can see uh, the the, bar, the red bar on the on the right of the graph, this represents. Uh, the annual value of pretty fish in Italy uh, over last uh, over last year, and how you can see there is a, a strong deficit, uh, uh, about uh, uh, twenty four percent with respect to the uh, long temporal annual average, uh, which which in the in the last uh, uh, thirty uh, climatolog climatological period period corresponded to about uh, uh, a little bit more than 900 of millimeter. How this uh, this change in the, in, um, in order to see how the in a, on a special uh, on a special scale how uh, this impact the different part of of uh, of Italy. You can see that uh, especially on the north western part of Italy and uh, on the also over Sicily and Sardinia, and we had a strong deficit, especially for the for the Piedmont and uh, uh, Lombardy region on the northwest of uh, of Italy. This actually had uh, a strong impact on water resource availability, and for water resource uh, uh, for the use of water resourcing in the different uh, in for civil agriculture and industrial uh, um, um, use. If you have, uh, if you just to have, uh, give you an idea what happened in the last year in Italy, we have estimated a uh, annual value of, of uh, 221.7 millimeter, which represent for Italy, the historical annual minimum since 1951. This is what occurred the last year in Italy. And as you can imagine, this adds a big impact, especially for agriculture, since agriculture in Italy is the uh, the use of water in agriculture is the is a major use. More than fifty percent of withdrawal of water resource withdrawal is for agriculture in Italy. So uh, you can imagine how this had uh, an impact. So we we have uh, estimated a uh, minus um, fifty percent of water availability with respect to not only the the last thirty uh, climatological period, but also with respect to long term annual average. So this is our our robust uh, our robust uh, uh, signal. Moving over uh, the, the the stream drought has the one occurred the, of, in Italy. Uh, seen in the in the last in the last uh, in the last period in the last analysis, we have uh, noticed a, a statistical significant increase of uh, the percentage of Italian areas affected by 
extreme drought. Even if uh, in the last uh, in the the last year, the, the, as you can see in the uh, at the in the, the last uh, in the um, the final bars of the of the of the graph, only more or less uh, around the twenty percent of uh, of the area it was uh, um, affected by extreme drought. The, this uh, had uh, a, a bigger impact because occurred in some of the parts of Italy where uh, there is ma the, the maximum concentration of agricultural production and industrial, hydroelectric and industrial production. So even a, 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 um, a reduction the, um, percentage of area reducted with respect to other previous extreme events have a, a bigger aspects. No? Yeah, just, just to give you an idea, not only did the north, uh, the, the south part of Italy was affected by, by drought in the past, but also the, let's say the entire part the entire uh, territory of italy was uh, also in the past affected by drought you can see here the, the reporting that we done for the UNSCC uh, last reporting period and uh, you can see the comparison between uh, the different baseline period from 2000 to 2019 and you can see that uh, in the different period most of the the territory was affected by drought and especially in the last period uh, as, as occurred in 2017 as occurred in the uh, last year most of the parts affected by drought was the northern part of it the situation of 2002 was uh, a situation that was common to all europe for this reason and also on the basis of different study that the European letter was, was conducted, that the European, condition, uh, the European Commission decided to have an adopt task group on water scarcity and drought to understand how a uh, European country is dealing with the, this topic, which are the, uh, the instrument tools that they, are, they have uh, uh, implemented in order to have a common discussion at European level and try to understand how to move on from this also consider that climate change is going to uh, increase the impact of drought on the economy. Just to give you an idea, on the basis on a, on a European study, it's the cost of drought, the annual cost of drought for Europe plus UK is, in nine, in nine, is 9 billion of euro. And this, uh, this cost can be arrived to 45 billion of euro in case of uh, an increase of temperature of three degrees, just to give an idea. And this cost doesn't cover the cost that we have uh, for ecosystems. So this cost do does, does not cover ecosystem losses due to, uh, to, uh, to drought. And you can see you can move from different scale and different uh, and on the base on different spatial and temporal scale, we can use different instruments and different a different uh, indicator to to uh, to set uh, to to assess the the, uh, the impact drought. So moving from uh, an European level where we can use uh, some uh, use spatial uh, model and uh, use spatial uh, data to a national level where we have to use. Uh, uh, information based on, uh, ring, for instance, ring gauge data, so based on observation, but also we can use satellite data to understand the impact on water bodies of drought. As, as I mentioned before, the impact of drought uh, last year affect more the northern and the central part of, of Italy. And this is a map of a battery of water storage at the national level that indicates uh, some, uh, some shortage of water for the different uses, especially in the north part. Only on the, on the last part of, of the year, the situation was a little bit uh, uh, better. And wholly this year on May, Finally, the, the severity of the water state shortage in Italy is low. 
uh, just just to give another idea of the of the, the impact of drought, you can see that if you consider only uh, the precipitation, some part of um, uh, Italy was uh, was affected by extreme drought. If you only consider an evaluation of temperature and the impact that uh, high temperature give to uh, evapor evapotranspiration that reduce the the quantity of water uh, of precipitation available as a water resources, you can see how the impact was uh, was managed. Just to give a, an idea, based on the on the last estimate that we have done in 2002, the amount of evapotranspiration due to high temperature was 70 percent with respect to uh, the um, uh, the mean that of a 50 percentage that we usually estimate uh, over the, the the previous period and again we can uh, the same the same analysis we have done the same analysis for different short uh, short um, short temporal period to see how moving from the beginning of the winter to the autumn how the the, the drought changed from uh, uh, from site uh, to site over, over italy and just to finalize my, my presentation, another point that we have to consider how this shortage of water can have an impact in terms of water stress. And also in this case, we can use different uh, instrument, a different tool to assist, uh, to assist water stress. And based on this instrument, we can uh, uh, refine or have a gross uh, estimate of uh, of water stress uh, just to to show you the the the, the last uh, uh, one of the last activity that was mentioned before which was this cooperation with in the in the, with FAO in the framework of the Mayo, uh, the memorandum of understanding that we analyze at the river basin district level the level of water stress done uh, using the sdg 6.4.2 and this is an example of the level of water stress for 2015, with respect to the total resource water um, available over the uh, period uh, annual uh, annual uh, water resource available over the period 1991-2020, which is the last climatological period, and how you can uh, see the uh, the the district, the Po River district, was in. Uh, uh, in medium stress uh, on, uh, on the basis on this uh, on this indicator, and why I, I put this map because 2015 was not a drought period, so even when there is we are not in shortage due to droughts, we can have stress uh, we we can have water stress due to pressure. Uh, done by which or what. So that's all. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano, for a very interesting presentation and uh, some new perspectives, especially focusing on the temporal and spatial dimensions of uh, the drought variability and also increasing frequency and intensity and putting economic value into this impact is a really powerful message. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Let's move on to the, uh, the theme four now. Uh, it will be presented by CNR and the topic is uh, empowering communities with the precision agriculture and the climate seasonal climate forecast to address climate change challenges in developed and developing countries. And we invite uh, Mr. Massimiliano Paschi, uh, data science researchers from, researcher from CNR uh, to make a presentation. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, um, I'm Massimiliano Paschi, I'm from the Institute of, of uh, Bio uh, Economy. Uh, and uh, along with my colleagues, uh, uh, we will show you uh, a series of uh, uh, efforts made by our institute and our um, uh, CNR entity uh, in order to uh, 
cope with droughts, but uh, providing our vision of how to uh, cope with them. Uh, first of all, climate is changing, of course. And according to our last uh, um, assessment reports, uh, the regions in the world where that are affected by an, an increasing risk of drought is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, numerous. And uh, there is, uh, those areas are um, experiencing an increase uh, pressure for, uh, from droughts. And uh, of course, we know, we all know that uh, even if uh, drought is a natural phenomenon, the anthropogenic climate change is exacerbating its impacts. And according to a um, specific uh, uh, study, we know that uh, both agriculture and ecological droughts are uh, increasing essentially due uh, not only to the shift of uh, precipitation patterns, but also for the evaporative demand that is increasing in many regions of the world. We know also that uh, um, the water storage uh, may have uh, a, a very complex network of impacts, uh, uh, both in the ecological ecosystem um, framework, but also in the societal uh, system. And uh, we know that there are some direct effects that are visible and also uh, quite uh, um, uh, simply identified, but also some other are less evident. For example, the food prices increases, uh, but also um, problems uh, related to the conflict, since uh, conflicts among users is essentially one of the main impacts of the reduction of water storage period. And also uh, from a, a recent uh, report uh, of FAO, the amount of uh, impact in agriculture due to drought is more than one third of the overall estimates of the pressure of uh, uh, precipitation reduction. But we also know that drought uh, is a, uh, as a, a, a slow onset stressor, is a, it is a powerful uh, paradigm and training ground to test and develop and, uh, new climate change resilient strategies because it needs a change, it, it needs uh, a transformative uh, effort to cope with uh, uh, such kind of events. So climate is changing, but are we ready for that? Well, we know that from uh, perceiving a risk and adapting um, and transforming to cope with that risk. Uh, it is a, a long path, it's a process uh, uh, divided in two different steps from learning, understanding, practicing and transforming. And uh, climate change challenge is uh, unprecedented uh, for humanity. And uh, of course uh, it is uh, recognized as a priority topic for present and future uh, research. And we have to remember that um, we have to change our way of thinking or when behaving um, because this is a, a critical, is a, uh, the key point of the transformative uh, process. We try to focus on uh, our attention on preparedness that could be essentially uh, uh, understood as uh, the, the, uh, the short-term adaptation strategy, okay? Uh, it is a process, it, is, uh, it involves a series of steps of action taken to anticipate, adapt, mitigate impacts, uh, but it is not a one-time event. Uh, instead, it is uh, essentially a dynamic and interactive process that evolves uh, over time to ensure the resilience of communities and ecosystems uh, in the face of climate change impacts. And for many aspects, uh, uh, the, the such kind of efforts uh, could be also intangible and economical unmeasured, unmeasurable. The, for specifically, uh, the preparedness is specifically uh, related to uh, to drought uh, is 
something which is related to the fact that from drought development uh, to the drought emergency management, there is a temporal gap and we can uh, play with that gap in order to increase our uh, um, efforts uh, facing the, 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 um, the impacts of the precipitation or the water storage reduction. A few burning questions. Are we as scientists really contributing, coping with the risk drought and the consequences uh, on the agri-food systems? What about dissemination of knowledge uh, and information between data providers, providers and then users? And is the information trustable and actionable, uh, and actionable enough for the transition towards uh, sustainable agri-food systems? Okay, just uh, uh, let's try to, um, I'm going to show you a, a few examples on, on this, um, in this framework, uh, uh, providing you a few practical examples coming from our day-by-day uh, -day experience. Covering the whole process from scientific research through training and down to operational practice. First uh, example is coming from the uh, uh, one of our uh, projects, uh, Anadia, um, in, in sub-Saharan West African uh, country, uh, Niger, uh, relating to developing uh, uh, information, uh, climate uh, and meteorological, agroclimate and agrometeorological services uh, uh, to improve uh, um, productions. And uh, uh, what are uh, the, the key points from, from these experiences that uh, essentially we are uh, tailoring information for, uh, for uh, farmers or uh, communities. Uh, this is uh, an effective way to increase their resilience, but this service uh, should be tailored for their needs and should be developed within an integrated in a, a, an iterative co-development approach with farmers. And uh, for our experience, uh, international and national agencies, for example, uh, also the, the location of the MEO um, institution may harmonize uh, or take into account the uh, caring these kind of uh, processes. And another key point is that the integration of different form of uh, knowledge is another important key. Combining scientific understanding of hazards, uh, disaster risk, and, and climate change phenomena with local uh, knowledge in the framework of the of an uh, uh, of a participatory approach. Another experience uh, is related to uh, the um, precision agriculture activities uh, related to the fact of moving and or taking different kind of information from satellite, from modeling, from uh, uh, monitoring uh, in, at the ground, information combine this huge amount of information into a simple one just related to the, the specific needs of uh, farmers taking their decisions on the ground. This is uh, the, the experience uh, coming from our AgroSat uh, uh, systems, uh, um, which uh, during the last years uh, um, uh, saw a, a huge increase of uh, users uh, in a way in which we are, uh, which is grounded in, in our, um, uh, let me say, in our soul, which is uh, providing information uh, in an open access uh, uh, mode. Again, another example is the um, uh, is the drought observatory where we put uh, uh, most of our uh, efforts and, and our experience in uh, collecting information from different experiences and providing them for free uh, through a, a, a free uh, um, web application to support decision and support uh, the uh, action uh, to towards or coping with, uh, with drought. Another uh, interesting exercise we, we gave is for 
uh, another place in uh, again in, in Africa in Mozambique um, we built a system uh, according uh, in uh, uh, cooperation with the WFP uh, regarding the uh, capability of forecasting the or the so-called forecast-based financing system for drought, uh, a way to uh, sides uh, uh, mon monetary um, actions uh, with months in advance uh, on an operational basis uh, in Mozambique. So. We think that uh, there is a sufficient scientific information and enabling technology to tackle the planetary grand challenge for agriculture, both for uh, how to face the increasing of food needs uh, due to the increase the raising population, changing dairy, uh, dietary styles. Uh, we know to how to reduce the, the use of limiting resources for intensive agriculture and how to mitigate the global change while producing sustainable sustainability food and feed resources for, for uh, organisms. But uh, we need uh, a, a few uh, notes for a new paradigm uh, to do that. First of all, climate change adaptation is, is not a state to be to, to, to reach, but a continuous transformation process, uh, which implies continuous changes at different levels. We must think and act in a global mode, uh, which is a merge uh, uh, words uh, uh, from uh, uh, Bauman, um, sociologist, global and local at the same time. We must strengthen uh, uh, the community's informed behavior frameworks beside the informed decision framework, because the key points are communities, local communities. We must enhance uh, social learning, support action and products uh, to fill the gap between individual knowledge and scientific knowledge. And there, there is a uh, great chance of uh, uh, being uh, or producing a, an active uh, uh, action uh, from institutional uh, institution, both na at national and international uh, level. Uh, we must remember that using it is not just a glamour keyword. It's a key around that. Uh, is a is a route uh, around them. Uh, the 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 tailoring uh, information must be uh, developed. And we also uh, remember that uh, the the social uh, negotiation process, uh, for example, in water management may be um, enriched by the knowledge coming from local communities uh, uh, as a result of a conflict resolution process. And finally, uh, coping with climate change implies not only individual readiness for a personal change, which is the basis of every uh, uh, transformation, but also the readiness of the society uh, as a whole. So I end up uh, with a famous uh, uh, quote, if you uh, do not change direction, you might end up where you are eating from Lao Tzu. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Massimiliano, for uh, um, stressing the importance of uh, dynamic and iterative process in the drought preparedness and also adaptation to climate change. And also the how to the highlighting the different elements from the analysis, communication, and also decision making and how to engage the communities in a co-creation mode that enhances the adoption of uh, the practices, et cetera. So thank you so much. Uh, let us move on to the theme five on food and consumers ratio to reduce waste and improve the diet with the products with the lower water footprint. And uh, the presentation will be by Mariko Ferrari and uh, Laura Rossi from uh, Graham.
in this uh, presentation with my colleagues Laura Rossi and uh, probably I don't know if he's uh, in connection now online because uh, I don't know okay because I think that uh, has some problem of the connection but no problem I can do that um, yes my presentation is uh, food consumers ratio to reduce waste improve the diet with the products with the lower water footprint uh, me and uh, Laura Rossi works in, in the CREA uh, Food and Nutrition Research Center. Uh, my colleagues, Laura Rossi in particular, is a coordinator of the food based dietary guidelines in Italy and also is a responsible of the Food Way Observatory, also in Italy. And um, in the farmer to fork uh, framework that consider a different phases of the food chain with the production, distribution, consumption, and the food waste, uh, nutrition and dietary aspects have a key role in the achievement of the most of the sustainable development goals. In particular, in this presentation, we want uh, uh, to focus on uh, the, the uh, SDGs, SDGs number 12 of uh, related to responsible consumption and production. Um, Related to food consumption, sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, in uh, 2018, Korea was engaged to develop the updated national food based dietary guidelines. This means uh, to translate our, in Italy, national nutrition recommendation into dietary practical guidelines for the consumer, but the older for the citizen of the stakeholders of food chain. So in this line, we start for the energy nutrient reference intake, and we develop a scientific dossier that for, uh, for the literature, all the literature review, uh, that for each uh, guidelines that we take in account of uh, our uh, the other guidelines. And uh, we develop uh, a document, consensus document uh, for the dietary new healthy, how to reach, how to achieve healthy dietary plans uh, for the consumers, but hold for the stakeholder. In this sense, uh, we, uh, we published uh, two, uh, we published uh, healthy dietary plans, also uh, weekly healthy dietary plans. This means uh, uh, the frequency of food group and soup group uh, in, during the week, also the, the, the uh, portions uh, for adults, but also for the children. And uh, in this, uh, in, the, in the last updated of uh, the other guidelines, uh, for the first time we introduced uh, the sustainability aspect uh, in a one chapter uh, uh, named the sustainable chapter. And uh, in this case, uh, we introduce not only we uh, taking account not only environment uh, aspect, but also social and the, 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 the economic aspect. The economic aspects means. Uh, all, uh, all uh, the literature that take in account the cost of diet also related to, uh, the, to the quality of foods and uh, the socioeconomic classes of uh, populations. And uh, we tried to in the this is this was the first uh, the first time so we tried to give some suggestion that uh, the most of that uh, are the, of this are in line with the healthy suggestions so we can do we can we can say that uh, most of a healthy dietary uh, suggestions are in line with the sustainable side the sustainable aspects so. Uh, the, the first is uh, to consume a, a large quantity of plant foods respect to animal foods. This is uh, in our uh, studies, we, we find that uh, we, 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 um, uh, we adopt a healthy uh, diet from our the other guidelines. We can reduce the greenhouse gas emission from 
po uh, more than 25%. Uh, this is uh, for uh, greenhouse gases emission, but also for water footprint. We give, uh, we give also some suggestions about uh, food group, specific food group, uh, animal food group, for example, consume milk and yogurt according to the recommendations. Milk and yogurt are important foods for the balance of the diet with the lower environment impact respect uh, than animal food, in the, in, than other animal foods. Reduce, reduce meat consumption, especially red meat consumption. You know that uh, also the healthy suggestion, healthy recommendation is uh, to not more consume red meat, more than uh, 300 to grams of uh, week. Put uh, all the strategies to prevent and reduce also food waste. This is important sustainable aspect that we consider in our dietary guidelines. And also we give some suggestions about uh, uh, during a shop to shop to, to buy some foods. This is all, um, um, also, they seek uh, leftovers for new recipes, paying attention to the conservation methods in order to prevent food deterioration, and so on. I choose a tap, uh, tap uh, water then that uh, are nutritional, excellent, and protective for the environment. So, I want to show you uh, the results. Uh, Okay, sorry. So I want uh, uh, we we do uh, after to publish the uh, the other guidelines. We want to 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 understand how is uh, the perception of the people that uh, um, that adopt these uh, the other suggestion. And we found that in Italy, uh, 15, 51 percent of the people is far from uh, uh, to the uh, the other guidelines recommendation. Males, young people, and who live in very large families pay less attention to the other recommendations. This is the result of, of our study. Uh, people that is in line with the food-based dietary guidelines could prevent food waste, being able to manage the household shopping, 30 for 30%. Uh, correctly evaluate the quantities, avoid the impulsive shopping. Is able to avoid the waste, knowing how to store food, for example, use the left lovers. We publish a special book, uh, how we can use uh, left lovers for uh, a new recipes. And uh, had a good example at, at home. But now I want to come back to the guideline, to the development goals, uh, uh, sustainable the developing goals uh, related to responsible consumption and production and also the number two zero hunger because we need to move uh, we know all that we need to move rapidly uh, versus the reduction of carbon water and land footprint related to production consumption processes and distribution ensuring uh, uh, adequate food availability in, in all population in the world uh, without a distinctish among socioeconomic, different socioeconomic classes. And uh, sustainable strategies to achieve these uh, uh, SDGs uh, are to, to move together. For example, if we, we, we get the action to improve uh, healthy the other partners we have in the same time sorry healthy and sustainable the other partner we have in the same time to get the action to improve uh, sustainable production method so this action have to to go together and uh, to investigate sustainable food consumption pattern that uh, is uh, our expertise in our uh, uh, institute center of crea uh, to evaluate the changes along the time, uh, quantitative impact uh, facility. It's very important to have better data quality of food intake, because uh, you know that the better data quality is uh, possible to, to identify better policy, for example, the other basic the other guidelines versus healthy diets, healthy planning. And uh, to, to improve the better data quality, it's uh, very strategic uh, to harmonize uh, food data 
uh, to harmonize among uh, all the countries, uh, for example, using the same food categorization. Uh, in this sense, uh, each country can do can 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 know uh, evaluate the food into a specific food group in the same way also using the same methods of a collection of, of uh, to collect uh, data food intake this is a, an harmonized way that improve the quality data that we use when uh, we do uh, new policies food policies uh, CREA uh, is encouraged not only for uh, food based data, national food based data guidelines, but also uh, to do uh, food consumption, national food consumption survey. The last uh, is uh, 2017 and 2020 that we finished to collect the data. And uh, we, it's a very important also freely sharing microdata at the individual level of the harmonized food consumption. Our data are uh, part of the, we do the, the survey uh, in according to the harmonized methodology from uh, proposed by EFSA. Uh, our data are part of the food comprehensive database of EFSA that they use in pr principle for uh, exposure assessment uh, of uh, substance and chemical in the, in the food. Uh, but uh, that they use uh, the food categorization uh, classification named food exit two the the same food system the food classification system was recently also adopted by fao uh, by fao gift platform where we have a collaboration we have uh, to share our individual data in the fao platform and they also we are in collaboration to find the suitable environment indicators and data set to include in this platform to evaluate to evaluate uh, the environment environment impact of the different uh, dietar intake from different countries and uh, how we use food consumption data we use food consumption data not only to understand if the population, the coverage of nutritional recommendation is coverage in the population, but also to develop new and healthy, sustainable dietary patterns. Uh, we use different methods. For example, this is our publication because in general we start with the full consumption data and apply a mathematical approach. Um, uh, name the prog linear prog program to find uh, an optimal solution uh, of uh, diet that uh, assure nutritional requirement and at the same time uh, assure also lower environment impact in terms of uh, greenhouse gases emission. We work not only for food consumption data, but we work only on the receipts. Uh, data in particular to optimize uh, uh, school meals in, the, in Italy. And uh, not only greenhouse gases mission, but in line with the thematic uh, area of this uh, meeting of water footprint, we also study our food consumption data to evaluate the food, water footprint impact of our uh, food con consumption, but also if uh, we adopt uh, a Mediterranean diet. So we we use uh, the not the last update uh, food consumption data, but uh, the Ira Sky 2005 to 2006 data, and uh, we found uh, um, we we. Um, we relate uh, adherence score from a uh, literature from Sophie et al. And uh, in, in the figure, figure to, to, we find the distribution of uh, the Italian adults diet by the adherence of Mediterranean score. And we find in that distrib normal distribution, we work on the two tails 
the tails that uh, represent the minimum adherence of the people, and the, the, the tails two that represent the maximum adherence. In, this, in these two tails, we find the quantity of foods that was consumed and the relative energy also, and the water footprint. And we, we observe that if we, we pass from tail one at the lower adherence of the Mediterranean diet to higher adherence of the Mediterranean diet, we can have 25% of a reduction of water footprint. This is um, this is means that the high adherence to Mediterranean diet lower is the environment impact in terms of water footprint, and the difference of the two tails is in terms in, in on food group choices and amounts rather than increase of an energy intake, considering that the Mediterranean diet consider a high consumption of plant food. This is a just a case study to understand that the knowledge of the water footprint of foods and diet will arise awareness among producers of agri-food to adopt for, weighty, for water saving production and among consumers to adopt the dietary habits to the just, suggest sustainable healthy path. This is a just a, a little case study, but can give some information to support the strategy to achieve the uh, sustainable development goals related to responsible production and consumption. This is just the one case of our study. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for a very interesting presentation linking sustainable healthy diet uh, to the environmental footprints, including the water footprint. So thank you so much. Uh, we are uh, 15 minutes behind the schedule. Uh, I think uh, we will open up uh, 10 minutes uh, for the question and answer. Uh, please uh, remember that there are more than 120 uh, participants are online. So they are also listening to what we speak in this room in addition to uh, 50 plus uh, um, physical uh, presence uh, in this meeting. So now let's open the discussion for question and answers. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Please leave, thank you. So there are three questions uh, from online participants and probably you can, in the meantime, you can think, oh. Uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Li Peng. So please. <laughs> so we welcome uh, the director land and water division in FAO and he is the key for this topic. And uh, Mr. Li Peng Li, uh, so welcome, uh, Mr. Lee, thank you for this uh, meeting. And, uh, you know, we are, uh, we have just completed the presentations. We are moving to the question and answer session. So we are behind the schedule by about 15 minutes. So we request you to, you know, uh, please <laughs> wait for us. So I have uh, three questions from the online participants. In the meantime, you can also think and consolidate your questions uh, uh, for uh, the presenters. We have the first question from Rafael uh, Wauwer. Uh, do you include soil drought definitions as well? And I see that his question is uh, focusing on, we discussed more about hydrological drought and meteorological uh, drought, uh, but are we focusing on agriculture drought as well? I think uh, there are a lot of uh, things mentioned about the agricultural droughts. And uh, I think this question uh, could be specifically focused to uh, Stefano and also to Massimiliano. So, so you are the two uh, colleagues focused on this particular topic and also from FAO. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, the answer is yes. I mean, uh, we are considering all the uh, all the type of, 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 of drought, all the impact that uh, 
the head of uh, the, the economical and environmental issue. So also the soil drought is uh, in terms of agricultural drought is considered in uh, our analysis independent and analysis is done with different temporal uh, um, temporal scale that reflect the different impact of drought in the different uh, part of the ecosystem, the economic uh, uh, use of water. Thank you very much for the question. Yes, uh, sure, the soil moisture um, and what is uh, related to the soil conditions are part of the game. Uh, essentially, the the uh, the ambitious challenge of uh, uh, identify um, uh, impacts both on agriculture on uh, in other sector, for example, um, water viability or whatever. Even though the the, the um, economical losses losses, uh, as uh, Stefano just mentioned, uh, is being derived by a, a, an holistic view of the system where all the components should be integrated. Otherwise, uh, we have uh, just a, a, a part of the of, uh, um, uh, of the overview, just uh, as part of, of the reality. So the soil uh, condition is, uh, uh, is a fundamental and pillar uh, in terms of uh, evaluation, but also in estimating impacts. Checking if uh, Stefania is able to answer directly. Yeah, indeed, it's very specific. So uh, I don't know, but we can let uh, we can let the person know afterwards. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so Francois, uh, we will contact you with a specific response to this particular question. So we don't have a specific answer focusing on uh, the projects. We don't know which project you are referring to. Uh, let's move on to the third question from the online participants, which is from uh, Christiana Spini. Question for Laura Rossi. When will the results from the uh, 2022 uh, survey on food consumption in Italy be available? Yes, Marika Ferrari. <laughs> Uh, yes, the the food consumption, the updated food, national food consumption data are uh, just uh, available and downloaded in the EPSA uh, link because in the food comprehensive database that is free and it's possible to download the data. This in the food access to uh, categorization. This is a uh, you can you can have uh, uh, the quantities of uh, subgroup and uh, uh, under groups because uh, food uh, food access to have a different level of disaggregation of food groups. So you can download the quantity of food consumed but not for uh, to have information on nutrients uh, coverage. So we are finalizing uh, the, the paper because we have uh, to publish the data be uh, before uh, to, um, to share uh, all the all data, obviously. And uh, I think that uh, inside this summer, we have uh, to publish the data. And after we can share all data if, uh, uh, with the EFSA links and uh, all the, res um, we have uh, some uh, uh, need to elaborate, you can do a ad hoc elaboration of our food consumption data, depend of the aim of the study, but if we can, we can do an according and to share all data after the publications. But now it's possible to download the food quantity consumer in the EPSA links. And uh, if uh, we want uh, to write to me, I send us uh, the link of EFSA to where it's possible to download uh, 
the, the data. Thank you. Uh, so, any questions from the participants here? Yes, me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I have a, a question uh, regarding the the, the drought um, uh, prediction. I thought you said you could do that in Mozambique for month in advance. And and then I would like to know how many months and how do you do that? Um, actually, well, we have to say that Mozambique is one of the best places to play with seasonal forecast. Okay, this is for sure. But uh, uh, we are using the ACNWF uh, uh, system, System 5, for pre uh, prediction from one to six months in advance, uh, to seven months in advance, just after a calibration of the treasure to be used and to have uh, uh, um, uh, another information regarding to the reliability related to that specific treasures. And, and how reliable is that then? The, the reliability is very high uh, and uh, you are able to uh, define what uh, the season forecasts are for. I mean, um, windows of opportunities. So the, the information, for example, measuring SPI index uh, is really, really reliable on, over there. Uh, not only when we have uh, uh, um, an end surface, uh, but uh, essentially over a, a, a wide range of uh, climatic uh, um, uh, patterns um, and the reliability is, is quite high. And uh, the, the, the problem is to adapt the forecast to the thresholds for action. So uh, these are coming from the, the end users, in, in this case, the WFP. And, and can you then connect that also to, to production, uh, to reduction of agriculture production? Uh, yes, but this part is coming from the knowledge of, of the WFP in terms of their activity over there. And, and the, the idea is to anticipate their action and just to move from the emergency to the preparedness. But again, that, that place in the world is, is, very, is quite um, interesting for uh, a place where tests uh, season of forecast over uh, this long uh, range uh, or with so much, uh, so many months in advance. Thank you, Massimiliano. I think uh, it's uh, ECMWF is the ensemble forecast. So it's a 52 member ensemble forecast. Yes. I think you can adopt it's a probability the, uh, adopt the measure of that into the biophysical model to relate to the impacts on the crops. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's very interesting work. So thank you so much. Yes, thanks. Uh, I have a question for uh, Massimiliano Pasqui about uh, digital technologies and uh, how it is possible to use them. Uh, we are improving our farms I'm from the side of farmers, I'm speaking. So, we are improving uh, decision support systems and all kinds uh, of uh, uh, digital technologies to be able to prevent diseases and to prevent and to, to cope with uh, water shortage. Uh, but we have on the other side a problem uh, with uh, rain uh, disaster like uh, uh, floods, uh, water floods and so on. So what are uh, what is the state of the art to prevent in such a way uh, the evolution of the climate change uh, for uh, uh, heavy rains and uh, similar accidents? Uh, and uh, what is the state of the art also of the studies, uh, uh, how to deal with uh, uh, avoiding so uh, water waste like we have in these cases like rainfalls, because we should be able to organize our water management uh, in such a way that uh, water saving is one of the most important issue. 
Thank you for your uh, question. It's, it's a very complex uh, question. I, I try to um, provide my experience. Uh, first of all, the the uh, there there was uh, um, um, an in, a, a huge um, effort from the uh, European Commission in empowering and developing knowledge, scientific knowledge, uh, to cope with the, such kind of uh, impacts. We have to remember that farmers are used to take decisions in advance. So probably the, the, the agricultural sector is the, more, the most advanced <laughs> sector, economical sector, uh, that is able to use every inch of uh, 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 of knowledge and and the the uh, the farmers are really able to use uh, every effort that we can make and provide them but the 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 i mean the the main limitation is that you have to tailor the information of course we are not able to prevent totally the risk we can Play to reduce some part of the risk, um, especially related some, uh, with some, um, let me say, uh, some part of the whole uh, range of uh, hazards. For example, I say that in Mozambique, the uh, playing with season forecast is quite efficient, but uh, in in the Mediterranean, we don't know, we don't have the same kind of skill in the, in the forecasts. And here there is a um, Dr. De Laquila from INEA uh, that uh, um, uh, he was the, the um, coordinator of a, a very uh, prominent uh, um, European project called MedGold for providing information from three specific agricultural sector in the Mediterranean, wine, uh, olive, and wheat. We are some information that could be tailored for specific uh, part of the of, of the process of the decision process uh, most of them are related so, with the uh, large scale hazard for example for drought this is a this is a positive thing we have less tools dealing with floods for example we have the chance to advise for Flash floods, uh, flash droughts, for example, but it's very, very difficult to provide information for flash floods, which, for example, in Italy was a, a clear, big, there was a, a very intense and extreme event just one month ago. So we have a, a knowledge that is able to provide some part of the information that is needs, but we have to think about that there is no a one single information there is a specific information for specific practice but again agriculture is probably the most uh, prominent and also useful playground to test and advance in this direction thank you massimiliano that's the end of uh, the technical presentation session uh, please join me in thanking all the six presenters uh, who have uh, presented today and also, and also active participation and also questions from more than 120 uh, participants joining online. Uh, so thank you very much. Let us move on to the closing session. My apologies for this uh, delay, that most 15 minutes delay. Uh, so uh, I request uh, the Director of Land and Water Division, Mr. Li Feng Li, uh, to provide the closing remarks of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. Um, today's event, it's uh, very important. And you can see we have a number of the colleagues from the Land and Water Division participating here, but also many colleagues are following this event uh, online. I strongly believe this event really highlighted the importance of the impacts of drought on agriculture and also highlight the interlinkages between the food security with drought, water stress, and also water availability. The fruitful discussion and the five themes presented this morning also shared all the solutions and innovative ideas 
from the technical, institutional, and policy dimensions. At FAO, they fully committed to a uh, transformation, a transformation to a more resilient, more inclusive, more efficient, sorry, transition to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and a sustainable agri-food system in the future. And the impacts, the increasing impact of climate change and drought necessitate the development of adaptation and mitigation measures that's across all the aspects of agri-food systems. The analysis of anticipated change re resulting from climate change from the human pressures, as we discussed this morning, it's fundamental to better to understand the ongoing trends, but also enhance the road management and planning strategies. At FAO, we promote the transform transformational changes and also assist the countries in developing appropriate cross-sectoral policies and effective measures for risk mitigation and preparedness. Such approach revolves around the three pillars of integrated drought management. First, a major challenge we're facing is really the lack of reliability, sufficient reliability, as we discussed already, in monitoring and also early warning systems, which fall under, fall under the, the, the first pillar of integrated drought management. While monitoring past and present conditions is, is essential, greater accuracy and precision are required to predict the likelihood, but also the severity of the future droughts. Towards this objective, the adherence to international, international quality standard is key, and the public and the private sector can certainly work together to collect and also to improve the data and ensure the real, re, reliability and also accuracy of the data and information. Also, government need to do when that's uh, opportunities to pursue the standardization of the data monitoring and also the information that can be built into all the forecasting systems. Additionally, the current tools do not adequately meet the need very often by the users, by the decision makers. And indeed, a user-friendly and also accessible tools are necessary to enable the end users, to enable the decision makers to make their informed decision. And in line with the second pillar, tailored vulnerability and impact assessment measures are essential because we all aware that unevenness of the drought vulnerability, but also not only within the country, but also among the countries. And in that perspective, remote sensing can provide a valid help that need to be complemented with the first hand in-situ in you know, data that's collected on the ground, which will ensure, especially some of the social economic vulnerability data will be fully inclu included and uh, incorporated into those data platforms. Technological advance, advancement should be pursued to strengthen the drought impact assessment, exploring innovative methods to collect the data, such as utilizing the social networks, citizen science, you know, mobile technologies, can enhance the understanding of vulnerability, particularly regarding the social economic factors. Digitalization play a cr crucial role, but efforts need to be Efforts are still needed to ensure its accessibility to the end users. Despite, despite significant technologies you know, we made, many individuals, especially those living in, the, in developing countries in the rural areas, and there's still lack of access to all the digital tools, platforms, and the information systems. Technology is also crucial for drought mitigation and the preparedness, which is the third pillar of the drought management particularly in sectors like water, irrigation, water dist distribution, storage, irrigation, all of these are very vital for ensuring communities to have access to those information systems. Research and 
technological innovations are crucial tools to avoid economic and social crisis when extreme events occur. And biotechnologies for improving performance and water stress conditions, as we heard today, highlight the role of advanced te te techniques, technologies in enhancing crop resilience crop resilience and also the productivity in drought prone regions. However, in many countries, we already mentioned that lack of access, especially the rural poor, is still the challenging that we try to have them in the future. And this approach that's implemented by FAO worldwide is really involved to implement the comprehensive new uh, approach that addresses both the science, technology, but also the institutional framework and also the capacity of the end users, the capacity of the key decision makers in the in the in those countries that need need our assistance. At the core of this approach, certainly, is the understanding and also the build drought resilience in agriculture in those not only in the developing infrastructure, but certainly really look at the capacity perspective. So it, it is important to really to prioritize across cutting activities that encompass the policy development, knowledge sharing, capacity development, and also the, the innovative solutions and the technologies. All these actions need to be broadly assessed, address the specific conditions related to health and nutrition in drought management and also mitigation effort within agri-food systems, as well as illustrated through the food, the food and the consumer ratio approach that's discussed this morning. So the joint event today really provide a platform to discuss and, and explore the innovative approaches and the collaborative effort that can contribute to effective drought management and also the development of the resilient agri-food systems in, in the face of the climate change, which are all fully aligned with the goal of the 2030 uh, agenda for sustainable development. At FAO, at both the, the Office of Innovation and also the Land and Water Division, we stand ready, look forward to really to our successful partnerships with the Italian Research Institute and many partners involved in this initiative going forward. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Li Feng Li, for uh, guidance uh, to enhance the collaboration between FAO and also uh, the Italian Research Institutes. There are four of them. They have shared very rich experiences and also their work and how we can benefit from each other. The message about linking data tools and assessments with the pillars of integrated drought management is really uh you know central point of the discussion that will be integrated as part of the work plan after the further discussion with all the partners so thank you so much and uh, so with this uh, we move on to our uh, uh, colleague from inaya uh, mr massimo ineta to say a few words and uh, the concluding remarks uh, thanks so much uh... Uh, for this uh, very interesting day. First of all, the uh, congratulations to all the speakers uh, for uh, their contributions. And uh, uh, thanks so much to Selva uh, for uh, the organization, to Giulia, Giulia Palestini, and also to Leonardo Peroni that is not here in this moment, but uh, a his effort was very important for uh, the organization, also for uh, the meeting before this one, uh, to organize all the uh, work program and uh, uh, the different, uh, the, 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 the seven uh, collaboration areas that we share. So uh, just a consideration about uh, uh, our work, because uh, I think that is uh, more and more important uh, especially in this moment, uh, uh, in the report uh, uh, of the United Nations for Development Goals uh, on 2022, we register a, a negative trend in the achievement of the uh, target because uh, climate change, because uh, uh, 
COVID pandemic and the wars. So our effort uh, is important to uh, invert this trend and go ahead in uh, uh, the right direction. And uh, the last consideration is about uh, uh, the uh, open science, because uh, uh, during all the uh, uh, presentation, also in the last one by Mr. Uh, Lee, uh, there is an emphasis on uh, uh, data sharing. And uh, we are a community, a community, and so we can uh, uh, follow uh, an open science community for sharing data information uh, and uh, all is in need for uh, uh, our progress in this uh, uh, field. Uh, so following the approach, the so-called fair approach, data is important that uh, because, uh, they are findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So all together we can do uh, this. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Massimo, for further reiterating the importance of the data uh, in the whole uh, process. So thank you so much. And let us uh, invite uh, uh, Mr. Filiberto Altabelli uh, from Crea to, to give uh, closing the meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for this. This day is very interesting um, uh, contribution to our work. Uh, we have uh, an opportunity to to share knowledge and uh, each other and uh, it's very important on one topic is a is a is a, is, is, in, um, is very important and uh, where we have to 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 pay you know and um, uh, our uh, maybe our uh, for the future uh, for the future we should uh, uh, try to move all this energy and knowledge uh, in order to go ahead with uh, our work and uh, so in terms of a proposal, proposal, proposal project on something similar in order to um, make all together a step forward. And um, this should be uh, uh, one of the, our uh, aims because the acknowledgement that we are, are very high and uh, we are concretizing our work in order to go high in this uh, um so in this side so um we are of course uh, at european level very well integrated with our network as you know we are h horizon project uh, pro, um, uh, funding or some other funding that are available and we are very well know our context um how could help us to step all this board and go ahead with our acknowledgement and we can carry out into this proposal project the um the institution research academy with high level of knowledge at european level including thank you thank you thank you Filiberto, for uh, raising this very important point on the joint projects of course we don't have the joint projects so far in the last uh, seven eight years since the start of this collaboration i think this is a very interesting point please send us your interests and also the topics so that we can connect to the technical divisions for example uh, sustainable healthy diet uh, we will uh, connect to the our uh, nutrition division and also food systems division and they may be very much interested to have a joint projects and also other topics you know um, so our colleagues from land and water the director is here if it focuses on the drought and agriculture mm -hmm. so please send us your uh, interests and topics so that we can connect to the technical colleagues so next uh, we will invite uh, our uh, focal point and uh, the institutional representative from CNR, uh, Mr. <coughs> Antonello uh, Bonfante. Thanks. Okay. It's, uh, it's uh, difficult for me to add uh, other info after the, the speakers of today and the presentation about the uh, draw innovation and draw in agriculture. 
but uh, it's clear from uh, the presentation that we have a different possibility to face drought in agriculture. And this is, uh, in my point of view, really important because we have to face with uh, this problem in different pedoclimatic conditions, different, uh, different uh, social contexts uh, with the different capacity also to access to the resources in agriculture. And uh, as we have seen, we can uh, discuss about the draw at different spatial scale, different approaches. And uh, uh, what I would like to stress is uh, that the, the problem of draw will emphasize the differences between the countries in terms of uh, achievement of uh, um, yield production that in some country for some crops reach the, the, the plateau of production. There is this gap with the other countries that with the the emphasis of drought due to climate change will not feel it. And uh, this is a very important issue that we have to take into account. And these uh, in, in most part of the world are due to the difficulty to access to the resources like water. Thus, when uh, we look to the um, to effect of drought in agriculture, we look to the water management in soil. Uh, and soil plant and atmosphere system. Then we go to, from big scale that we have seen today to really uh, local scale at which the processes are realized. And uh, in this sense, uh, it's important uh, to me to stress that uh, we, we have a lot of sensor that can be used to face the problem, uh, to manage the water uh, in different uh, condition. And uh, today this sensor uh, become um, more cheap and then can be used and applied in different conditions. The CNR had, uh, have a cooperation project with uh, in Burundi with the LIMEM Institute uh, that uses a, a specific sensor that is by a resource that is like a wire that is put inside of the stem of plants. It is able to see, for example, the, the, the plant health. And this signal is used to guide and uh, solar and eco-friendly uh, irrigation systems. This is really important because it is not so much expensive system that can help to, to optimize the use of water. Because the problem is you have to optimize the water that you have. And um, uh, in this context, uh, I would like also to stress the, the importance of the basic knowledge about uh, the agriculture and the system that we want to manage. And in this, uh, uh, we have, uh, I, I think that we have to take care about soil, about soil health, because if, you are, if we are able to maintain the health, the health of your soil, good, the soil ecosystem function that are produced by this soil are, are better than the soil non healthy in, also in raw condition. And uh, finally, uh, just a uh, few words about the problem that the action that we can realize move uh, at, at a different velocity. If uh, if we look to the system and then agricultural system that soil, plant and uh, and then weather, climate, if you want to face the problem of drought by climate, to face climate change, the time windows is bigger because you act to reduce uh, gas emission and you have to, to change your system responses. As told by Massimiliano, we have to adapt to this dynamic system is uh, we cannot change completely I come back to before the to change in gas emission while the action that we can make on soil can really improve the water management and uh, uh, and at the same time uh, the the improvement by genetic approach genetic by on uh, plant uh, performance to draw is uh, is more rapid in action and uh, in effects uh, in our system compared to the other one. Thus, uh, what uh, I can say, and I close with these uh, two words, my, uh, my contribution is that uh, in any case, I think that we have to, uh, to do an effort to, to make this, uh, uh, the, um, the, the study of the problem of draw very multidisciplinary. We cannot think that only climatologists or uh, pedologists, agronomists can face this problem. And uh, today we have uh, also a lot of uh, a big help by people that work uh, with the modeling like uh, uh, artificial intelligence or other kind of uh, mathematics approach that uh, applied on knowledge from system at this different level really can help to, to, to improve our, our production and then to face through. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Antonello, uh, for uh, bringing in the systems approach perspective in, uh, in promoting uh, timely action. So thank you so much. And let's move on to the last uh, uh, presenter on this closing event. This is uh, Anna Luise uh, from ISPRA. So Anna, over to you. Thank you, Selva. Thank you to everybody. So I have to count on my position to be last the last speaker, not least, I hope so. <laughs> and I can avoid to repeat what my colleagues, especially my colleague from CNR was saying before, the interdisciplinarity is really relevant. Also with economic and social issues, for example, that are uh, often uh, considered ancillary and not crucial and not in the focus. So. We are all uh, of us, we are, uh, we agree and in the time of climate change, we need to act on the obtaining the better information to reach a sustainable and equitable situation. And um, I mentioned what Massi was saying, uh, we are uh, on uh, where in the, the ecological quote unquote situation is worsened by COVID by wars. On the same time, to cope with the environmental resilience could help to have a, a, a positive effect also on the climate and in the wars that are all around the world. Where we, have, we look at the main uh, war in this moment, it is the conflict, Russian Ukrainian conflict. But there are, if I remember well, 230 uh, small and uh, bigger conflict around the world, without mentioning the Syrian, that is especially driven by water scarcity and the water in the drought event. So we need a lot of information, as uh, sorry for mentioning my colleagues, but it's my institution. They say to us that we need uh, to know how much water is necessary, how much is withdrawn, how much water is not returned to water bodies and has become a, a, a really a, a basket of information where yes, the, the artificial intelligence could help, but maybe also our intelligence to combine the, 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 the different factors and to give them the appropriate priority, the appropriate weight to uh, all uh, of them. We are trying to offer at the national level this, uh, this uh, kind of expertise, and we hope to, to be an example to other countries. Uh, our also um, ISPRA and FAO, uh, we had uh, an interesting experience on a project, uh, going on project, because uh, we are updating the data on the 6.5.2. Yes, the agenda 2030 is our mantra. Um, I have, uh, I work in the, on this field for uh, different aspects, so I, may, I am very passionate of this, and uh, this is a, a good uh, example. Starting today, Mr. Martin uh, called us to valorize the innovation. The valor innovation is also the co collaboration, to find a way to collaborate, not to have a academic conflicts or uh, uh, jealousy among uh, the institution. And I believe that this kind of event favorized so strongly the conversation among us. I talk about not only with FAO, it is, uh, we are very happy to, to have uh, uh, to work with them. With some of them, we work also in other uh, fields. They uh, knows very well what I'm referring at the, I work also on the international in the, the, the international negotiation, and we met often in this uh, at this level. But also to have a, a conversation among us, to have a, a, a comparison not with, between data, but on how to approach data. So this is necessary to have this: how to approach data. What are the questions that we go? We we we. Uh, uh, we, uh, we ask to data what the data are needed for what, and this is a, a, another interesting and important 
in, um, in, uh, in, in um, achievement, given again that our role is to offer the best of our scientific production to another level that uh, Piero mentioned today, Piero Genovesi, that is the crucial role on the effective dialogue between science and knowledge at all level, technical, and the decision-making processes. All of us, we know how difficult is this, how difficult to build these kind of bridges. I call them the bridges between two different languages. And there is not one language better than another. There are different. Uh, when we, as a, uh, people of the scientific organization often say that the political field uh, that they are not not they don't understand what we need we don't under, they don't understand what we propose no they have another approach is an another point of view and we should be able to intercept this kind of uh, of necessity so uh, i i repeat i talks um uh, often about building bridges and building new languages. This is our role. We are uh, in a good moment of uh, our MOU. There are many years that they are working, but now I, we are going toward a more concrete operational behavior. So let's go ahead. Uh, oh, sorry, last words, last words. I am the only lady in this panel, very proud of this, <laughs> very proud of this, and uh, especially because the uh, the World Day to combat the certification and drought is devoted to celebrate the the gender, the, the women and girls with uh, a slogan, very nice slogan that is "Her Land, Her Rights." Another point, very interesting to explore, is the women empowerment that goes through also through uh, also through the um right to the land and the access the uh, powerful access to the dec decision making um, uh, processes so data for ladies let's work <laughs> As, a lady, as, a lady, as well, ladies for data. Data for ladies and ladies for data. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. It's always a pleasure listening to you, not only today and also in all our uh, <laughs> joint meetings in relation to this collaboration. All your messages uh, related to the science policy society interface is very well noted. And also your gender balance message that you mentioned. Yeah. I, uh, I worked yeah. in the science policy interface with Vera for some yeah. years and uh, for the UNCCD it was a, a strong experience for us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. And just uh, say a few words. Uh, thanks message to all the colleagues who have contributed to this uh, very important uh, meeting. Uh, the first physical meeting after a very, very long time discussing about uh, the joint activities and also way forward. To start with, I thank uh, uh, Mr. Li Peng Li uh, and also his team from the Land and Water Division for uh, providing the strong technical contribution for this collaboration focusing on drought and agriculture and also other uh, aspects related to climate change, etc. And climate change is also one of the priority, seven priority areas of this, uh, this collaboration. I also thank uh, Vincent Martin, the Director of Office of Innovation for providing uh, the uh, key messages and also opening remarks this morning. And I thank all the institutional focal points and the institutional representatives of the four Italian research institutions for your uh, um, uh, both opening remarks as well as the closing remarks and also uh, Mr. <coughs> Mr. John uh, Paolo uh, from, uh, from Naples, uh, Naples University for his uh, keynote speech this morning. Uh, focusing on the whole, uh, the broader aspects of uh, this collaboration. And uh, I thank uh, the, the focal points of our Italian uh, research institutions for this MOU. 
uh, Mr. Massimo Ineta from Inea and uh, Federica uh, from CNR and uh, Anna Luis uh, from ISPRA and uh, Paula Fiore uh, from uh, CREA uh, for your active contribution, uh, not only of course today and also for uh, uh, preparation of the MOU and also for uh, the, the consolidation of the work plan uh, in the last years. So thank you so much for all your contribution. And I take this opportunity to thank my colleagues working uh, as a focal points for uh, this MOU, uh, Julia Palestini and uh, Cristiano uh, Consolini, uh, who has contributed for organizing this meeting and he has taken care of all the virtual aspects of uh, this meeting and also for several uh, support he has provided. And uh, Leonardo Peroni, he is the focal point from the partnership division. And he is uh, very instrumental to start this uh, particular physical meeting together with uh, Massimo. And unfortunately, we are not having him here today because of uh, his other uh, commitments. So thank you so much. And I thank all our uh, uh, land and water colleagues uh, for their contribution and readily accepting uh, to organize this physical meeting and taking a lead technical role uh, on behalf of FAO. So thank you so much. So, yeah.